than this past Monday's Azure d'Amour. And you know what? There's lots to love about tonight's main event, a fight with significant title implications in the welterweight division as the number four ranked Naaman Gracie meets number five Logan Storley in the first five round non-title main event in Bellator MMA history. As for the rest of the main card, former Bellator 170 pound champ Andre Korshkov tangles with Chance Rencounter, who begins his second stint with the promotion. A crossroads confrontation between battle tested vets Georgie Karahanian and Adam Piccolotti goes down in the 155 pound weight class. A blast from the past returns to the Bellator MMA cage. Former middleweight title challenger Brennan Ward fights for the first time in four and a half years against Brandon Bell at a contract weight of 175 and top 10 ranked heavyweights throw down in our main card opener as the undefeated Davion Franklin duels Saeed Soma. I'm Mauro Ranallo, cage side with Big John McCarthy. Bellator 274 is bookended by 170 pound scraps as we get set for Orlando Mendoza against Jonathan DiLorenzo to begin the prelims. And John, give us the 4-1-1 on the tail of the tape. Let's just be honest, these are both guys young in their careers trying to make something of their name, impress somebody so they can be put on a roster. 0-1 against 1-0, we're gonna see who can get it done. Here is the international voice of Bellator MMA, Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Mohegan Sun Arena as we get set now for Bellator 274. We kick it off now. The prelims get underway with three five-minute rounds in the welterweight division. Introducing the blue corner at six foot one, weighing in 169.8 pounds. His professional record one and oh, he fights out of Goshen, New York, presenting Jonathan Bilorenzo. And across the cage, his adversary out of the red corner at five foot eleven, weighing in 170.6 pounds. As a professional, early on, he's 0 and 1, fighting by way of Venezuela, out of the Bronx, New York, Orlando, the Silver Fox, Mendoza. In charge of your action, referee John English. Orlando Mendoza, red blue, gloves, Jonathan DiLorenzo, blue one, gloves, bell, and round one scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the welterweight division. DiLorenzo at the age of 30, dipping his toe as a pro into the uh, kiddie pool and picking up a victory in his professional debut. But now he's in the Olympic-sized pool that is the Bellator MMA cage, John, against Orlando Mendoza, looking to bounce back from a loss in his first appearance in the Bellator MMA cage as down goes DiLorenzo. DiLorenzo hitting the ground. This is a guy that he's got the full game, though. He can wrestle, he's got submissions, he's good and calm in the stand-up. Well, the real question here is, does he get a little bit overwhelmed just because of the atmosphere? Is just, look at that. Ramble, Dars choke attempt. On the Dars quickly put on. He's got a very good chance of making this work. Nice scramble. Mendoza really working to get out, but he's in trouble. Coming up on one minute gone here in the first round, and it is De Lorenzo putting the squeeze on Mendoza. De Lorenzo getting it done with a dynamic Darce choke in round number one. Welcome to Bellator MMA. That's exactly what you want to see out of a guy. This is an audition. Boy, he just made something of it. That was a great job. He got knocked down off of the beginning. Take a look at what happens here. He locked on that Darce choke quick. And when he gets to that top position here, there's a lot of pressure. You see Mendoza trying to work his way out of it. He actually turned out of it at one point. It doesn't matter. Once that thing is on and locked, 
your arm is up against your neck, compressing that carotid artery, you're in trouble. Great submission win. And for Orlando Mendoza, well below the Mendoza line, he is now 0-2 as a professional mixed martial artist. But for Jonathan DiLorenzo, again, you get the opportunity to come into the big time of mixed martial arts. And not only does he seize the opportunity, but he gets it done in dynamic fashion. He passed the audition, and, and John, well, his eye may be a little swollen, but he's more than ready for his close-up. <laughs> he took a big shot, but recovered, showed that you know what he was composed, locked on that submission, got the win. Can't ask for anything more. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, the Dars brings on the tap officially one minute, seven seconds. Round number one, the winner by submission, Jonathan. Memorable Bellator MMA debut for Jonathan DiLorenzo with the first submission win of his career. Just getting things started now, 2-0, and oh, as he is victorious via Darce Choke, went fishing for a submission and landed a big one. Let's go to Amanda Guerra at the fight desk. Hello, Amanda. Hello, Mauro. A very good evening to you. You are looking dapper, by the way. I don't think he's been on camera, but you'll see it here in a second. I am here along with two-time world champ Josh Thompson. Talk about that. De Lorenzo, I mean, his first sub, and it was awesome. It was fantastic, and Big John hit it right on the head. You are here for an audition. This is what you're supposed to be doing. You come out here with a performance like that. Absolutely amazing. Congratulations. What a way to kick off tonight. We've got a great night ahead. Let's jump right to the main event, though. Naming Gracie versus Logan Storley, and whoever wins this could get a shot at the title. So, Josh, here's the thing. They don't want to just win. They want to do it impressively. What are you looking for between these two? So for me, I'm looking for Naaman Gracie to stick the jab, stay long, because he's the longer, taller fighter. I'm looking for that. I'm waiting for him to push, have Logan Storley shoot from long distance to where he makes a mistake. If he can do that, he's going to have success. Logan Storley just needs to go out there, wrestle the heck out of him, get him down, control the top position, not make too much space for the ground and pound. Let the elbows and the hands fly. But make sure he always stays conservative, and I think he can get the win. We're going to talk a lot about this fight as the night rolls on, but for now, we'll send it back down tomorrow. All right, AG, thank you very much. Off to a, well, quick start with an impressive win for Jonathan DiLorenzo, but now we get started with the featherweights. 145 pounds, Isaiah Hokett takes on Theodore Makuka. And now set to make his way to the cage, Theodore, the head taker, Makuka. Theodore Makuka turned just 22 years of age, February 10th, and getting again a huge opportunity to rebound here. He suffered back-to-back -back losses to Damon Wilson and Cody Law, both via TKO, but he's named the head taker because, well, he took Ricardo Heisenhage's head in just 36 seconds in his uh, professional debut. So Makuka living by the sword, dying by the sword early on in his career. Look, losing to Cody Law, he is a stud, so this is a big fight for him coming in against another wrestler. We'll see what he can do. And now we welcome his opponent, Isaiah Tonkins. Well, for Isaiah Hokett, his Bellator MMA debut was the longest 10 seconds of his life. He was vanquished in 10 seconds by Corey Samuels back at Bellator 261 last June. John, in many ways, you can now say, okay, well, that, the, the, there goes the perfect record. The, the pressure's off. He loses his debut. He gets stopped, and yet there's still plenty to like about a poking. You know, the thing I compare him to is Aaron Pico. Now, he's not the wrestler Aaron Pico is, but he's darn good. California State champion. This guy can wrestle his butt off. 
get rid of the pass, start your career anew. Let's go to the tail of the tape for this featherweight fight. And the real thing is take a look at how young both guys are. 22 for Makuka, 25 for Hokik. This is the future. The future is now. Here is Michael C. Williams. Tonight here at Bellator 274, the prelims continue as we go to the featherweight division. Scheduled for three five-minute rounds, introducing the blue corner. At six foot weighing in, 145.2 pounds. His professional record, one and two. He fights out of Stamford, Connecticut, Theodore. The head taker, Makuka. And across the cage, his adversary out of the red corner at five foot ten, weighing in 145.8 pounds as a professional. He's 0 and 1 by way of Clovis, California. He fights out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, Isaiah Hawkins. And the referee in charge once again, John English. Hoka looking to bounce back from a loss in his professional debut while Makuka looking to Andy snap good. a two fight Blue, losing good, streak in one, his return to Bellator MMA. It's round number one, and immediately the takedown is secured by Hoka, putting that highly credentialed wrestling to use immediately. He's been wrestling since the age of four, John. This is exactly what I expected Hoka to do is look he came out guns a blazing in his first fight and he got caught that can happen if you're going to stand up and throw hands that can happen to you. Let's go back to the basics. Let's go back to what made you wrestling is what you are based upon. Take the guy down. That's what he's done here against Makuka. Two highly respected gyms on display as Makuka now. On his back in the closed guard, Makuka training out of Law MMA under the likes of Ray Longo. While Hokit, he's with Jackson Wink MMA in Albuquerque, New Mexico, with the likes of Greg Jackson and Mike Winklejohn. So, two highly respected camps, and these two youngsters get to sit under a myriad learning trees. Oh, absolutely. And, and just like I said in the beginning, look, Aaron Pico went through the same thing. He lost that first fight. So highly touted. Well, Hokik is highly touted too. Go back to the basics. Go back to who you are. That's what you're seeing right now. Yeah, going back, the can opener being employed there by Isaiah Hokin. And Hokin, very aggressive from the close guard, dropping some ground and pound. And of course, Makuka John, as you say so often, cannot accept being on his back. And he has been active trying to control the posture in the attack of Hokin. Yeah, but he's been hit by some big elbows here. Like that one. Like that. And he's got to figure out a way to stop that attack. If he continues with his feet crossed in the guard position, basically he's holding Hokit where he wants him to be, which is not a good place to be right now. Highly educated striking from Hokit. We've seen body, body, head. We've seen him diversify. We've seen him try to utilize slashing elbow strikes and still very measured, still very much in control. Very much in control and landing big, heavy shots. This is, you know, this is not just ground and pound. This is not body, body, head. He is landing some big time elbows and they are going to pay dividends as this fight goes on. So Hokan looking to exercise the demon from his first fight as a professional mixed martial artist and off to a great start here against Theodore Makuka. Secured the early takedown and has been controlling from top position and doing damage with his strikes. Boy, doing damage is right. Take a look at the goose eggs on Makuka at this point. He is lumping him up. Right now, Makuka is nothing but defensive. Yes, he has moved his legs and everything, but he is nothing but a punching bag at this time because he's doing nothing to stop what Hoka can do. And Hoka utilizing unorthodox elbow strikes. And now the wrist control and his right is released and does damage and now slashing left elbow strikes by Hokit. Under two minutes left here in the opening round, all Isaiah Hokit. All this is doing for Hokit is giving him confidence. Every second that goes by, he's feeling better and better about being in the cage based upon what happened in that first fight. 
Makuka trying to shrimp his hips, trying to escape, trying to create an opportunity to reverse his fortunes. Instead, it's Hokut goes to side control, now to full mount, With the, and the arm triangle choke employed by Hokut. That is on right now. He can press against that. All he's got to do is get from the mount position. It will work, but if he brings himself off to his right side, now he's just took away. He just let go of it, goes to the ground and pound. And now Makuka surrenders his back, so, and there it is! Isaiah Hokut bouncing back in brilliant fashion from a 10-second knockout loss in his debut. He dominates Theodore Makuka and puts him away with his first submission. Outstanding performance. That's exactly what you want to see from a young fighter. Had a lot of pressure coming into the cage based upon who he was in the wrestling world. This guy has got a lot of talent and he just proved it. Right away, watch as he changes level, comes in, gets the double leg. It's not perfect, but it's enough to get Makuka on his back. And from that point, he landed some vicious ground to pound. Look at that elbow shot across the forehead and it was consistent throughout the round. And then he just systematically put himself in better positions, gets the mount, gets Makuka to turn, and once he does, goes for the rear naked choke. Makuka is done at that point, taps out right away. Isaiah Hokitz, first professional win, first submission victory as he improves to one and one here in Bellator MMA. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, the tap comes by way of a rear naked choke officially. Three minutes, 59 seconds, round number one. The winner by submission, Isaiah Hogan. Isaiah Hokin passes his second test in the Bellator MMA featherweight division with flying colors, picking up a beautiful submission win over Theodore Makuka, who is now well in the midst of a three-fight losing streak. But we're never at a loss when we go back to the fight desk in Amanda Guerra. Moro, thanks so much. Uh, two good submissions so far. And you know Isaiah well. What do you think of his performance? He needed this. It was a bounce back win for him. I know his ability, his talent, his wrestling. I know all of those things and his credentials. He needed that. Get him back on track. This is where his career needs to be headed. Big smiles from him tonight. I'm uh, big sure Big smiles he's for me. I love it. I love seeing him. Uh, you know a couple guys on the card. We'll talk about that coming up. But let's talk about our coming event tonight. Uh, there could be some surprises in this one. We have Andre Koreshkov going up against Chance Recounter. Excuse me. Let's start with Koreshkov, former world champ. He has these this power, Josh. What do you think we're going to see from him? He doesn't just have power. He's got it all. He's got the spinning back kicks, the spinning back fist. He's got every type of flying knee knockouts. He can deliver at any moment the power he possesses in his hands, his knees, everything. When Benson Henderson first came into this company in Bellator, he just, Koreshkov just dominated him from top to bottom. And he is just someone that systematically picks you apart in every way, from the feet to the ground. He can wrestle. He's got good top position. He's got great submission. He's got good ground and pound. He is someone that mixes it up in all levels. He is a welterweight that right now I feel like is getting lost in the mix with all of the other top welterweights that we have. He's still in that mix. He's someone to be reckoned with. He's top 10 right now. I asked him when we got to meet with him, I said, what do you want people to know about you after this fight? And he said, I want them to remember I am right there in that mix as well. I am top 10. I eventually want a shot at the title. Uh, let's talk about Chance Recounter. Look, he's coming back to Bellator tonight. It's good to see him here. This fight, Josh, this could change his life if he does well tonight. Yeah, this is one of those fights that if you beat Koreshkov, then you have an opportunity to catapult yourself into not just the top 10, but into that conversation of, okay, look, let's start seeing about, let's talk about me fighting, fighting someone like MVP. Let's talk about me fighting the champion, Yaroslav Famosov, getting into those Paul Daly type fights. He's got the ability 
because he's so long to make you overcommit on something and he possesses the wrestling as we're seeing here with his submissions he gets around the neck because of his length it's easier for him to wrap his arms around that head and arm and those anacondas and those darces and those guillotines to get that finish and he is somebody we've talked to this week the energy that he brings is that i can't lose and i like to hear that from these type of fighters battling someone like korshkov i might have seen him in the gym and just try to like peek around see what they're doing and look you're going to see him carrying the osage flag he is from i, I my family's from oklahoma Pahaska, oklahoma osage nation he said all i could do when i was little was wrestle that's all there was in this very small town and he is thoroughly believing There's nothing in his wrong wrestling. with that. No, Rest this is, is great. Key. This yeah. is awesome. Look at where it brought him. Uh, Mora, we'll send it back down to you. Who doesn't love to embrace the grind as we embrace the Bellator MMA lightweight division? Justin Montalvo, he is four and oh, he takes on Corey Samuels. Hey, Lightning Wolf got his Bellator MMA debut done in lightning quick fashion. And now to the cage, we welcome Corey Samuels. I have some belly to charge with a ball game. We just saw Isaiah Hokett rebound from his professional debut defeat. That came in just 10 seconds against this guy, Corey Samuels. This man right here, and look, this man is fast. He's got a lot of power in his hands. He's athletic. He'll tell you, I don't like to be in the cage long. I want to get it done. Amen. Well, take a look at this highlight, because this is him against Hokett, and it is fast. As soon as he lands, boom. Hokick is in trouble, and he finishes it off with a hammer fist. He has got power. He is very fast. Like I said, that was a 10-second knockout. That left hand was beautifully placed. Tied for the fourth fastest knockout in Bellator MMA history, living up to his nickname, Lightning Wolf, Corey Samuels. And now, to make his way, Justin Montalvo. Justin Montalvo, proud of his heritage, made his Bellator MMA debut last December at Bellator 272, and he defeated Jacob Bond via unanimous decision. And uh, Montalvo, he displayed a diverse attack against Bond. I love the way he went to the body, and uh, hey, he stuffed takedown after takedown after takedown. Talking about body shots, you just saw what he was doing. Look at him rip to the body. He did a great job throughout the fight with attacking up and down, just controlling the whole fight. He is a very tough, tenacious fighter that has no backup in him. This is going to be a battle. All right, BJM, give us the 4 1 1. Very slippery put. You can take both guys are long, 73.5 to 74.5. Both like to stay at range and come in and snipe their opponent. We're going to see who's better. Well, both are hungry like the wolf. Let's go to Michael C. Williams. And for those joining us tonight live in the UK, watching on BBC iPlayer, we welcome you to Mohegan Sun Arena as we go now here at the prelims to three five-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing the blue corner at six foot, weighing in 155.4 pounds. His professional record, three wins, two losses from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, Corey Lightning Wolf. And across the cage, his adversary out of the red corner at six foot, weighing in 154.2 pounds as a professional. He's undefeated at four and oh, fighting out of West Hempstead, New York, Justin King Marvelous Montalvo. In charge of the action once again, referee John English.
Montavo 4 and 0 oh with three Naka wins. Man, you good? Samuels oh, you good? coming Samuels, off so that 10 go. second knockout victory in his Bellator MMA debut. And this one underway in the lightweight division immediately. Samuels attacking the lead leg of Montalvo. Samuels fighting out of the southpaw stance. And he's walking down Montalvo early on. This is where I think Montalvo's gonna have problems with Samuel as far as the speed. He's gonna have to adjust to get used to the timing and speed of Corey because if he can't pick his spots in his counters, it's gonna be a long night. Both gave each other props in terms of the prowess and the striking department and immediately Samuels doing a great job of attacking all kinds of the uh, points of the anatomy of Montalvo and doing a great job of going upstairs and downstairs and mixing up his attack with his hands and his feet. And especially hiding those kicks behind the hands because that's the last thing coming and those hands are up high to protect his head and the kick comes to the body, it's clean. Montalvo again comes in undefeated, but we talked about it, John. We felt that Corey Samuels, despite his record, just three and two, he would prove to be a stiff exam for Montalvo, especially building on the momentum of his last, last fight. And boy, he just put together a crisp one-two combination. Montalvo ate it. He did. Hey, look, we've said he is tough and durable, and he will keep coming back. Wow. There he is, biting down on the mouthpiece, swinging hard. But you can only take so many. He's got to stop what Corey's doing. Get into a clinch, slow it down, hit him with a counter. He's got to get Corey off of that rhythm. Nice knee inside to the right hand. Corey's feeling very good. That was a beautifully placed elbow by Corey Samuels. Two minutes gone here in what has been a frenetic start to the first round. Samuels again going with an elbow strike and again doing a great job of putting together his punches. Great counter elbow over the top, John. Beautiful body strikes by Montalvo with a great counter. That elbow up top like you're talking about. But look at Montalvo go rip into the body. That will punch holes in that gas tank. Yeah, you want to put the money in the bank and yet there is that risk and reward factor. Yeah, right now, Samuels is throwing a little too hard. He's really he's in that position where he thinks he can hurt him. Just keep touching him. Just past the midpoint of the opening round, and now it's Montalvo's turn to open up on Samuels. It was a great start for Samuels. A better finish for Montalvo. Kid Marvelous with a marvelous come from behind victory. This is what we talk about all the time, and they were saying, look, he's tough. He is durable. He is a guy that you have to put away because he's gonna keep coming back at you. And that's what he proved in that fight. He did exactly what we were talking about. He was getting hit, but he kept coming Happy forward. Happy birthday, AB. And to my biggest little fan wearing my sweater. I love you. Come on, come on, come on. Watch the right hand. You're gonna see it comes Montalvo. That right hand that puts Corey back. And then he ends up in positions where he's taking big shots. There was a couple of elbow strikes that were landed, but the body attack was continuous. You always saw Montalvo going back to that body. And then when he hurt Corey, straight shots, and then opens up on him, trying to finish him off. A beautiful, beautiful display of when you are getting hit, just keep up with your counters, keep yourself composed, come forward and put it on him, he did. I heard Justin Montalvo give a birthday shout out and well here tonight he lit up Corey Samuels like a birthday candle and blew him away to improve to five and zero oh with four knockouts kid marvelous must be studying tape of marvelous Marvin Hagler he brought the power and boy he overcame early adversity a great start by Corey Samuels and as we mentioned a fantastic finish for Justin Montalvo let's go to Michael C Williams ladies and gentlemen inside the Bellator cage it comes to an end officially two minutes 43 seconds round number one the winner by TKO still Undefeated Justin Kid Marvelous Montalvo. Happy birthday, AB.
Let's go to Big John McCarthy. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with the winner, Justin Montalvo. Justin, that showed everything that we saw in your first fight. You can get hit, a guy can put you in a position where he's actually touching you, but you keep coming back with counters, and your body strikes, your body attacks are relentless. Man, I, I just worked so hard for this. None of this would, wouldn't be possible. None of this would be possible without my father. He's the best thing that's ever happened to me. He takes care of me, he fucking loves me. I'm just grateful to be in this position and grateful to keep working hard and prove to everybody that I'm the best. Me, don't doubt me. I don't think after that win, anyone is doubting you because Corey Samuels was Bet getting some me. hard shots in and you just kept taking him. Talk about your training that got you to this point where you were able to turn the corner in that fight and get that win. You know, he came out hard. He was strong. I knew he was gonna talk a little shit, but I just kept looking at my dad. He said, don't you fucking let this motherfucker do shit to you. You fucking own this cage, and you're the fucking man. And I want to shout out to Ariel Hawani and Felix Perez. He bet a lot of money on me. He shouted me out when my other friends didn't want to bet on me. Felix did. So Felix, you're my best friend. I love you, and you're a smart man for betting on me. Well, anyone should bet on you in the future. That was a great win. Congratulations. 2-0 in the Bellator cage. Give it up for Justin Montalvo. Here at the Mohegan Sun Resort and Casino, Montalvo betting big on himself and coming up huge. 5-0 with four finishes, all via his striking prowess. The Law MMA representative laying down the law here tonight. Plenty more Bellator 274 preliminary card action coming your way. Hey, Bellator Nation, follow us across a large array of digital platforms and stay up to date on everything you need to know. Like us on the Bellator Facebook page and see exclusive videos. Follow us and get instant updates on Twitter at Bellator MMA and get a chance to have your tweet live on the broadcast. See amazing pictures on Instagram at Bellator MMA. Join Bellator Nation today. The new Bellator MMA app is here. New look, new features, new fights. Watch live weigh-ins and prelims. Share your fight picks. Earn points and badges as you rank up to the heavyweight division. And stay up to date on events, rankings, and news. For all the latest features, download the new Bellator MMA app. Available on the App Store and Google Play. Cut off a career highlight victory. Right uppercut got buck on the knee. Top contender Neiman Gracie. Gracie wins again. Puts his legendary name back on the line. In a showdown with Logan Storm Storley. Beautiful job by Logan Storley. The man who pushed welterweight champ Yaroslav Amazov to the brink. Could he finish it right here, right now? Who will submit? It is all over. Who will survive? And that's it. Bellator MMA, Gracie versus Storley. Tonight, live on Showtime. Showtime. And we are getting closer to our main card tonight, headlined by Naaman Gracie of the famed Gracie family, hoping to carry his family's legacy even higher tonight. But he is going up against all-American wrestler turned fast-rising MMA star Logan Storley. This is a clash of styles in this one. We will see who comes out on top. And speaking of fast-rising MMA stars, take a look at your bottom left. Davian Franklin, so freakishly talented, made his MMA Bellator debut in 2020. He is 4-0. And three of those four victories are either KO or TKO. Amanda Garrett, Josh Thompson with you here. Uh, let's talk about a fight we're going to see on the main card that is going to have us glued to our seats. Sometimes Josh, if you don't know because you don't see it on camera, he tries to run down to the cage. We're talking about Georgie Garahanian versus Adam Piccolotti. This is such a good fight. I want to start with Georgie because this guy knows what he's doing. 16 submission victories. 13 of them have come in the first round. Yeah, because he's got one of the best arm and guillotines in the game. The the biggest thing was he went down to 45, didn't have a lot of success, came up to 55, and he's looked spectacular. He's a way different fighter and a way better fighter in this weight class. And you see when he fought Kiefer Crosby, everyone thought like, oh, Kiefer Crosby's gonna keep it on the feet, he's gonna out exchange him, put the put the beating on, on Georgie. The, the issue was is that 
Georgie pushed him to the fence where Kiefer ended up shooting, and then he's like, hey, you want to go to the ground? Of course. As soon as that happened, Georgie had his way on the ground with him. And it was a phenomenal submission, got the tap. Look, he's continued to progress and get better at 155. The weight cuts are not a factor. Dieting and nutrition to get down is not a factor. He looks great. He's got a, he's got his hands full, though, tonight against Adam Piccolotti. Okay, so let's talk about Adam Piccolotti. Uh, Josh and I have a conversation about two weeks out at a every fight, and you're walking me through what Adam has been through the past year and a half. So it started with what? A knee, tore a ligament in his knee, then one shoulder, then another shoulder, a cut above the eye, got COVID. What hasn't this kid gone through as he gets to here tonight? Yeah, I, I don't want to continue to say everything. He had in his last fight, he tore his uh, LCL. Yeah. Then after that, he uh, tore his shoulder, and then he tore his elbow shoulder. Then he got a cut. I mean, you he's guys been see what I mean. This he's is a long been, combo. Yeah, yeah, he's been through a lot. But the overall game of him, since I've trained with him, I've also helped coach him. I've also worked with him on his stand-up. He was one of my main training partners when I was an active fighter. He is a phenomenal jiu-jitsu practitioner. He's good all the way around. Raul, Raul Castillo has definitely shaped him since the time he was 15 years old. His grappling is some of the best in the game. If he gets Georgia to the ground, I think he's got the advantage. But he's been working at CSA with Kieran. And if he, and Kieran gets your hands on fighters, their stand-up and their kickboxing ends up being some of the best in the game. He said, look for the knockout potentially. Yeah, and he has fired up about tonight. A small redemption story there. Uh, another redemption story we're going to talk about coming up. Brennan Ward. That's the next time you guys see us on camera. For now, we'll send it back down tomorrow. All right, Amanda, thank you very much. As uh, we make way for the middleweights and Jordan Newman, he is 3-0. and All of his wins here in Bellator MMA. He takes on the undefeated Cody Herbert, fighting for the third time as a pro. First time in the Bellator cage. And now making his way to the cage, Cody Herbert. of age, Cody Herbert, fighting out of Crestview, Florida, making his Bellator debut following two bare-knuckle MMA fights, John. Trying to go old school on us. <laughs> I remember those days. Vale tudo. <laughs> Look, there's one thing that you'll see with Cody Herbert. He likes to stand up and bang. He's got power in his hands. The real question is, does he have the wrestling to compete with Jordan Newman? And now to make his way, Jordan Newman. Hey, John, speaking of old school. Hello, Newman. And Jordan Newman is 26. Pro and Bellator record of 3 0 with back to back TKO victories. So he realizes his striking is an asset and uh, looking to remain undefeated, looking to pass. His latest exam in the form of Cody Herbert. Look, he had a decision victory in his very first fight here in Bellator. And from that point, he has put it on his opponents. Look at this crucifix position. This is where his wrestling comes in. Look, he was a two-time NC2A Division III champion. This guy can wrestle, and when he gets on top of you, you're not getting away from him. He has got vicious ground attack. You all right, John, the tale of the tape for this middleweight matchup as uh, we look for our fourth consecutive finish, maybe, during the prelims. It's Newman versus Herbert. Uh, cannot wait because it's 3-0 against 2-0. Someone's O is going to go, but this should be a good one. Here is Michael C. Williams. Tonight, here's Bellator 274 prelims. We'll go now to three five-minute rounds in the middleweight division. Introducing the blue corner at 5 foot 11, weighing in 188.6 pounds. His professional record undefeated with two victories, no defeats, out of Crestview, Florida, Cody, the reason Herbert. And across the cage is adversary out of the red corner at six foot, weighing in 185.6 pounds. As a professional, he too stands undefeated, bringing three victories, no defeats from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Jordan, not human, Newman. And the referee in charge, Dan Murphy.
Bergliano. Jordan Newman representing the highly respected Rufus right, Sport. Right, Cody sir. Herbert go, representing Casper Boxing Club and uh, Travis Peak MMA as we begin round number one in the 185 pound weight class. And immediately it is Newman trying to dictate terms, fainting and trying to take the center of the cage, John. He's trying to take. Oh, and trying to take Herbert's head off early. Nice job by Newton coming in, seeing that Herbert's trying to set up his right hand. He thinks that's going to be the, the shot that's going to get him into Jordan Newman, but he's got to throw. Right now, it's all Jordan Newman. Newman, level change, gets the well. Actually, it's Herbert jumping into a guillotine choke attempt. But instead, it's Newman posturing and delivering some ground and pound, mixing in those elbow strikes, trying to cut Herbert and trying to finish it early. I don't know if he's trying to cut him or he's trying to put a dent in his head. He is throwing big time elbows. Usually when you throw elbows like that, you usually produce the vino, the red stuff. It will flow. You keep on getting hit. There's no way you can. And, and now Herbert looking for a submission from the bottom, but definitely not there as Newman has stacked him. And yet, credit to Herbert to at least try Working not accepting what has been a, a dire situation. Absolutely, and the big thing you're looking at is look when Herbert at least changes the angle. Right now, in this position, there's no submission for him. He's got to change that angle, and that's what he was trying to do. That's where that arm attempt with the arm bar was there. He just didn't have it set. Jordan Newman, a two-time Division Three national wrestling champion. The University of Wisconsin, Whitewater, and uh, the wrestling serving him well here against Cody Herbert, but he's been mixing in some nasty ground and pound as well. Right here, you look at just the base and position of Jordan Newman. He can be in this position all night long and continue to do good work. Cody Herbert's gonna have to figure out how to at least change the position. Nice going after the arm again, but once you keep on going back to the same thing, it becomes almost elementary. It's not gonna work because the guy's waiting for it then. You gotta switch it up. If he didn't know already, Herbert finding out here in round one that he is in the hurt business, but he is trying desperately to try to find a way to either force a stand up or create a situation where he can sweep Jordan Newman, but Newman fully cognizant and doing all the right things from top position, John. Yeah, absolutely, there's not gonna be any stand up with the damage that Jordan Newman's doing. Now he went to half guard and it was good of Cody to get him back to the full guard. But when you get him back there, you've got to at least get feet on the hips, do something to either go for the submission or get yourself up out of this position. Newman told us before the fight, there is no one in this sport that I will not dominate on the ground. Not proving to be a liar yet. Bold statement when you think of everyone that he can compete against, but. And I know it's a, a short sample size, but hey, off to a great start in this fight, John. He's looking good in this fight right now. This right here, you know, everything he was doing before was fantastic. Again, you see the change of the angle by Cody Herbert trying to look for that arm bar. It's not there. And hats off, though, to Herbert. Despite being utterly dominated by Newman, he is, again, trying to better his circumstances. Absolutely. When you got a guy dropping elbows the way that Jordan Newman's doing, that is not an easy thing to think about being offensive. And at times, you're seeing Cody Herbert going after the offensive maneuver. He hasn't been able to lock it in yet, but he's trying. Herbert told us that his biggest advantage would be the striking. Spent time as a pro boxer and worked with a lot of amazing strikers. I guess Newman must have done his homework because, again, wasting little time to take Herbert to his domain where he has dominated for the better part of four minutes. of volume right now by Jordan Newman. All those shots, yeah, they're not going to end the fight, but they do add up, and it does make a difference in what the judges are seeing as far as this possibly being a 10-8 round. Numbers tell some of the story, not always all of the story. Right now, according to our statistics, Newman has landed 58 strikes. Herbert, six. Just a little bit of a difference. And based, all based on one takedown. One takedown. But this is where, this is the grappling arts. And when it comes to oh, nasty elbow. Grappling arts are huge. 
And so are those strikes, John. Yes, they are. So Jordan Newman secures the takedown and then goes on to dominate round number one against Cody Herbert. Right? No strikes. And yet, it's Jordan Newman that sports that's some that's damage that's over that's the left eye. Yeah, he got that. That's in the actual eyelid areas, right. from what I saw, and it came from eyelid. a short elbow Don't inside. Every time I hear eyelid, that. I think Randy right. Couture and Peter Belfort. That was All nasty. Right. And what's happening here? He's controlling it, it, it could he also be that that shot. was a clash right. of heads. Well, that's it. something that happens in this bottom. position All a lot. Here was the takedown. Nice drive. Double leg, puts him on his butt. You see that Cody went for that yeah. guillotine. It was not there. But the big elbows that Jordan Newman was landing, some of them vicious as far as the power he was putting on him. Yep. But by the look of him, you would have thought that Cody Herbert was the guy on the yeah. top position for most of that round, because that, that right eye is not looking good on Jordan Newman. Yeah, that's a that's in a bad place for sure. There we are. Right, and we will two, continue ready? to ready? monitor that situation. A dominant opening round for Jordan Newman. Enough to be a 10-8 round on your unofficial scorecard, John. Look, you, you go through what he did in that. You look at the non-activity, except for a couple of arm bar attempts, but they were never even close by Herbert. I would say that's a 10-8 round for Jordan Newman. The rounds are five minutes. He was credited with four minutes and 22 seconds of ground control, and we're back on the ground here early in round number two with Jordan Newman in a familiar position on top. Well, he can go for a lot more than four minutes and 22 seconds now. He's taking it down even before the 4.30 mark. This is where he wants to be. He has got just outstanding control on the ground. And we saw what he did in the first round. It's only going to get worse in the second if Cody can't figure out a way to get out from underneath Jordan. And Newman looking to pass to side control. Herbert snatching the leg back into half guard, but relentless Jordan Newman staying aggressive, going for the far side submission. Yeah, he was looking for a straight arm lock there. It's not quite there, but that's okay. Just go back to what you're doing. Now he's got it looking towards the Kimura. Looking for that double wrist lock, but now back into the open guard of Herbert. But Newman staying active, John, and looking to maximize every little inch and create his own inch, <laughs> inches. And you can see what's going on here. I mean, it, it's nice that Cody is doing a good job of keeping himself close so no big shots. Well, there's some landed. separation. But at this point, there's been no offense except for those, you know, the, the, if you want to call it a submission attempt, it was an attempt, it wasn't close, nothing else has happened as far as offense from Cody Herbert. Newman, as we mentioned, looking to extend his knockout streak here in Bellator. Coming off a second round TKO, thanks to his elbows against Branko Busick. And prior to that, scored a first round TKO against Riley Miller and dominating Cody Herbert here based on two takedowns and a sustained offensive attack. And right now, if you're Jordan Newman, what you want to think about doing is you see how he's using his head as a third arm. He's putting pressure down right there. Take your hand, put it towards his forehead, and slide it off, landing hard elbow shots. This is what made Tito Ortiz who he was. He was able to control position, bring his head over the top of his opponent's head, and land big elbows. Right now, you're seeing at least Cody Herbert putting that foot on the hip. At least he's looking towards trying to push off. You saw it right away. Jordan went. Oh, he's oh. back. Newman leg going lock. for a leg lock to scramble, and it allows Herbert back to his feet with just over two minutes left in the second round. And again, there's another example, John, of why when you go for the leg lock, you put yourself at risk, and it allowed Herbert to scramble, escape, and we're back on our feet. Yeah, I like I like the thought process. I do as well. I like the fact I that really he attempted do. it. I don't think it was quite, you know. Not everyone well. is Masakasu Imanari. No, not everyone is. So now, with a minute 40 left in the second round, 
Cody Herbert, who told us he had the advantage in the striking department, he needs to create some separation and go to work. Oh, look, he, he comes from that boxing background, and the separation is everything, because when you're in this position, there's no referee to stop this clinch. As long as Newman is being busy and doing damage, they're gonna, he's going to let Oh, he's in. got the hook in. There's a scramble, and Herbert finds himself on his back. Side control by Newman with just over a minute remaining in the second. Now the crucifix and the elbows to the side of the head of Herbert. What a beautiful escape by Herbert. Yeah, Herbert did a very nice job. He kept after it, did not give up on that, got out. Wow, what a scramble. Jordan Newman coming right back, and you're seeing in the grappling exchanges, Jordan Newman's able right. to move where he wants. And right to full mount, 45 seconds left in the middle frame, and Herbert hanging on, trying to control the posture of Jordan Newman. Right now, Jordan Newman should take either that left or right arm, start to put it between him. There you go, in the face. He's oh, a nice bridge right. by Herbert, but not, not, even, close. not even close because of where he's distributed yeah, his weight and where his take mount a, is. Take a look at where his hips are. They're so high that when he bumps his hips, it's not going to do a whole lot to disrupt the weight and balance of Jordan Newman. Beauty of MMA on display as we close out round number two. Jordan Newman doing it again to Cody Herbert. Dominate him on the ground. Just get up, do what you're doing. All right, stay in tight. He's walking in you. Just think, let's go quick to one, two, one, shoot. That's who you go to. Just to keep it simple. Get down, get him down. Don't try to over muscle in these positions. Don't worry about going for that leg, line, legs, and all that. Just stay on top. You got easy to control him on top. This is Newman. Look at the entwinement of the leg. The right leg, you see how he's got it inside coming to the backside. That's a control position. And then when he gets the mount, look at that shot right there. That opened up Cody Herbert. You got to give it to Cody, though. Very tough. He's taking a lot of big shots. That hurts. And he is stuck tough in this fight. No give up. You can see the cut that that elbow created. One of those elbows that we see in mixed martial arts. Crowd here appreciating the efforts of both Cody Herbert and Jordan Newman. They both showing the wear and tear of this battle, but it has been a battle that has, again, positionally and otherwise been dominated by Jordan Newman, John. Look, Jordan Newman does have the cut on his eye, and it is swollen. But other than that, he hasn't been really touched in this fight. He has been in control, in position, and done everything that he's wanted to. Oh, he just right hand. tagged the right hand and used it to shoot for the takedown. And Jordan Newman, now three for three in the takedown department, make that four for four now. And back into side control. Beautiful side control position. He did exactly what his coach, Scott Cushman, told him to do. Look, I want you to go in there. Use the takedown off of throwing your hands. That's exactly what he did. This is a position that obviously it's going to be hard for Cody Herbert to get away from. He's kind of threatening by holding that wrist, looking for the Kimura or Americana, but he's now trying to move himself into a mount again. Nice job opening up those little shots inside. John, a minute and a half gone in the final round. A grueling fight, especially for Herbert, being on the bottom. And yet, he needs to do what he's trying to do now. There has to be some way to try to explode out of this. Otherwise, he's going to be forced to, uh, you know, be comfortable with this uncomfortable position. Well, right now, he's in a bad spot because Jordan has been able to look at him, lace the arm. He's taking it behind the head, grabbing the arm to bring his head forward, so he's got a free open shot at it. And yet, Herbert continues to try. He's doing everything he can to stop what Jordan Newman's doing. Oh, but you can't stop those elbow strikes. Under three minutes left in the fight. Newman 
has run the table thus far in the early stages of his career and looking to do the same here. What a beautiful elevator sweep there, and Herbert now has to make the most of this rare opportunity to show off his striking. He just landed a right hand. He's going to have to land a lot more. Midway point of the final round and the shot, the sprawl by Herbert. But the diligence. Take a look at Cody Herbert. He just told you everything as far as the frustration of fighting a guy like Jordan Newman. Another takedown. Five for five. Stacking up Herbert. Trying to pass guard, has done so. And yet, John has a maximum, I mean, give credit to Cody Herbert. He's been in some real dire situations, including full mount, and has survived. Oh, he's been tough as nails. I mean, oh, that was a heavy Speaking, strike. sometimes you're the hammer, sometimes you're the nail. Well, Cody has been the nail just about the entire fight, but he showed there's guys that'll sit there and eventually they'll just almost give into it. That is not who Cody Herbert is, but look out for that arm triangle, and Cody sees it. Who is Jordan Newman right now, John? Jordan Newman, <laughs> I'll tell you what, he has been impressive with all of his grappling, everything as far as moving himself into better positions throughout the fight, and just consistently trying to do damage to win the fight. Putting a mix to mix martial arts, Rufus Sport noted for their striking proficiency, and yet home of the Bantamweight champion, Sergio Pettis and Jordan Newman, who is just over a minute away, barring some kind of Hail Mary from Cody Herbert to staying undefeated, and this time showcasing his grappling skills. Full mount, high full mount on Herbert, John. Uh, look, you saw how he just walked himself straight up under his arms. That is a horrible position for Cody Herbert to be in. He has got to try to either shrimp out, move, get himself back to a half guard. This is not good for him right now. Job. Nice backdoor escape by Herbert. They both rock each other. Under 30 seconds left, and Herbert needs to put the pedal to the metal. And there's the takedown attempt by Newman. And Newman, much to the chagrin of the crowd, and Mohegan Sun. Hey, you have to appreciate the fact he is now six for six in the takedown department. And what a dominant performance by Jordan Newman. That's putting in work for 15 minutes, Mr. McCarthy. That's a lot of hard work, but I'll tell you what, it was impressive, and the crowd can get upset about the takedown at the end. Jordan Newman controlled that entire fight. He fought an outstanding fight against a very tough individual in Cody Herbert. What impressed you the most with everything being relative? This is Jordan Newman's fourth professional fight. With everything you've seen from him thus far, what, what impressed you the most other than the obvious? Dominant wrestling, what else impressed you? I'll tell you what really impressed me is the first time I've seen Jordan actually have some kind of problem in the fight. That eye, that cut, he didn't let it affect him at all. He stayed focused on what he was supposed to do in the fight, and that's why he got wow. his win. Look at those stats. 128 strikes landed compared to 12. 12 minutes and 18 seconds of ground control, six takedowns. I don't think we have a question about who won that fight. Does your unofficial scorecard show the dominance by Newman? How did you score it unofficially? Well, if I, if I was going to have a score, I have it 30 to 26 for Jordan Newman. So great performance by him. All right. So we await the official verdict, and how can it be anything but an emphatic victory for Jordan Newman. He says, knowing mixed martial arts and combat sports, but what an effort by Newman. And again, for Cody Herbert, never gave up, never accepted his lot in this fight, and yet was unable to avoid the takedowns and then unable to reverse and create any opportunity, and he knows that his body language indicates just that as we go to Michael C. Williams with the official decision.
Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go now to your three judges at cage side. Your first, Michael Murtha, scores the fight 30 to 26, while judges Jacob Montalvo and Marcel Varela both see it the same 30, 27. I'll have it for the winner by unanimous decision. Jordan, not human. Well, Newman in many ways not human because he's yet to taste defeat like us mere mortals. Let's go to Big John McCarthy. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with Jordan Newman. Jordan, that was a dominant performance. You were all over Cody, but he was tough as nails throughout the fight. It's the first time that we've seen you have any adversity. You were dominating the first round. It was a big round for you, but you did get cut. How did that cut happen? I think it was from an elbow from underneath or a fist, uh, something from underneath. I think it might have been like an up elbow. So, yeah. When it comes to being in this cage, you're dominant with your wrestling, but your hands, you were landing some good strikes. I know Coach Cush over there. More strikes on the feet than he did. So oh, I'm you sure. landed a lot more strikes. I believe it was 128 strikes to 12 throughout the fight. That's pretty much been my last three fights. Uh, over 150, 100 strikes to under 15, so I just want to keep it going that way. Obviously, he got me one good on the eye, but other than that, he didn't really get me, so that's good. You're now 4-0 in this cage. Let's talk about who should you be fighting next. There's a lot of guys in the 185-pound weight division, a lot of guys that are rising up in the ranks looking for that title shot. Where do you think you should be, and who should you be fighting? A couple more guys, and then it's going to look to start looking into those top-ranked guys. and. You know, move on, get those guys, but another guy, be another guy, and eventually, you know, keep pushing towards the top. So I'm just looking to keep improving, uh, get another fight, and win that fight, and just look for the next one. Congratulations on a dominant win. That was an outstanding performance. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to give it up for Jordan Newman. Jordan Newman, a perfect 4 0 representing. Rufus Sport out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, same gym as the Bantamweight champion Sergio Pettis, Duke Rufus and crew doing a, an outstanding job with their camp and uh, we will have more Bellator 274 prelim action in just a moment. Bellator MMA returns to the three arena in Dublin, Ireland for a world championship showdown as middleweight king Gegard Mousasi defends his belt against undefeated number one ranked Austin Vanderford. Then Saturday night, March 12th, it's on to St. Louis for a battle between top ranked featherweights as Adam Borich battles Mads Burnell. On April 15th, from the SAP Center in San Jose, we shower you with a double main event. Undefeated featherweight world champion A.J. McKee battles former champion Patricio Pitbull in a must-see rematch. And the $1 million light heavyweight World Grand Prix concludes as reigning champ Vadim Nemkov defends his belt against Corey Overtime Anderson. May is a month of power, not flowers, when the Bellator cage heads to Europe for back to back world title clashes while paris may be the city of love on friday may 6th there will be no love lost as heavyweight champ ryan bader defends his belt against francis czech congo in a championship rematch from the accor arena and the very next week at the OVO Arena, Wembley, Friday, May 13th, welterweight world champion Yaroslav Amosov puts his perfect 26-0 record on the line against London's own number one ranked Michael Venom Page. It's a globe-trekking Bellator MMA championship extravaganza only on Showtime. Hot off a career highlight victory. Right uppercut, the buck of the knee! Top contender Neiman Gracie. Gracie wins again! Puts his legendary name back on the line. In a 
showdown with Logan Storm Storley. Beautiful job by Logan Storley. The man who pushed welterweight champ Yaroslav Amazov to the brink. Could he finish it right here, right now? Who will submit? It is all over! Who will survive? And that's it! Bellator MMA, Gracie versus Storley. Tonight, live on Showtime. And we are getting closer to our main card tonight, which you just saw their headline by Naaman Gracie of the famed Gracie family. He is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu phenom, but he has come so far in a stand-up, going up against all-American wrestler turned fast-rising MMA star Logan Storley. We will see who comes out of this one with their fist in the air. But the one that is going to have this place packed on its feet tonight, Brennan Ward going up against Brandon Bell. Brennan Ward's story is one we want to share and one that he wants to share is hope for others. Brennan Ward, we get to see him fight tonight because he fought for his life. I think it's important for a lot of people to know what I went through and like where you can get to. You know, because, I, dude, I thought there was no hope. Irish Brennan My name is Brennan Ward, fighting at Whaling City Athletic Center. You know, there was a lot of speculation, a lot of rumors about, you know, me and what, what I was dealing with, you know, on uh, behind the scenes. A guillotine, going hard for it. Full guard. Can he get it? What's his head? Ten minutes all over. Because I threw my career, I threw my career away with because of drugs, man. I was partying real hard since 2015. 2016 was bad, 2017 was bad. I asked him, I said, do you ever think about stepping back and resetting? He, he wanted nothing to do with my <laughs> Nope. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's Brennan, man. You know, when, when, you, when you do drugs the way that I did drugs, like, a lot of people die. You know, a lot of people die. So it's important for me, for myself, to get back and prove to myself that, hey, man, that you can get back to where you were. Oh, oh, that's it. Good night. John McCarthy steps in. his right hand right to the jaw. He is out before he hits the ground. So you already know that this fight is not leaving the f first round. Facts. It's facts, dude. You know me, dude. I don't do the glorified sparring shit. I go out there and I can throw haymakers and I throw dudes in the head. But a right hand puts Olsen on his back and this one is over. Brennan Ward has done it again. I feel good. I feel like 2022 be a good year, man. Be a good year. New winner by knockout Irish Brennan. So, like, tune in because you're going to see a knockout or me suplex somebody. Brendan Ward is from Connecticut, so as I said, you know, a lot of people are coming here to watch him tonight. Um, we had, I think, 30 minutes is what we set aside to talk to Brendan Ward. He was there for at least 45 because his energy, Josh, is just incredible. Yeah, it's infectious. We've talked about this, I think, since that fighter meeting. But I think a lot of things that I want to talk about realistically is that it's hard to reshape your life. Yeah. It's hard to go through the process of what he went through. He it was struggling in the cage. It was showing his performances. And for him to shake his friends, to get away from what he was doing, found some new people to train with, and has rededicated himself to this, you can't be anything but excited to see him fight tonight. I got goosebumps underneath my suit right now. I'm just talking about it because I understood the energy when he walked out of that room that energy was there and I loved it because I became a huge fan of that very moment he had his daughter with him and he said part of the reason I've done this is for my daughter and look he was very frank with us he said I should be dead at this point he's had friends that have died we are gonna give him all the credit in the world for doing that he deserves it tonight though he's fighting he's stepping back into the cage for the first time in four and a half years and Brandon Bell is gonna be looking to upset him tonight in front of a hometown crowd Say whatever you want. Brandon Bell, you got your hands full, buddy, because no matter what you do, no matter what happened, I'm just telling you right now, he has power in his hands. He's always had power in his hands, and he can wrestle. He can wrestle the dickens off of a lot of people. I'm telling you right now, he was down at University of Oklahoma wrestling with those guys, and he was having a field day saying, look, I was with the best guys in that room. I can hang. Sure, they get takedowns. I get takedowns too, though. And I'm telling you right now, a focus and reinvigorated Brennan Ward is a nasty one. So Brandon Bell's got his hands full tonight. It's going to be exciting to watch both of them in the cage on that main card coming up on Showtime. For now, Moro will send it back down to you. Thank you very much. The sport has a habit of producing goose bump inducing moments. The return of 
Brendan Ward and of course the journeys of Deanna Bennett and Justine Kish. Two women who are ready to throw down in the 125 pound division and continue their inspiring road. And now set to make her way to the cage, Justine Kish. John, I might think hyperbole is the greatest word ever, but we're, we're talking truth here when it comes to these ladies' respective stories. I mean, Justine Kish, made for movie material, was uh, abandoned by her parents in her native Russia, adopted by an American couple when she was five years old, lost her adopted father when just a year spending with him in car accident and so on and so forth, just recently lost her mom. And, and yet here she is beginning her Bellator MMA journey, fresh off a, a run in the UFC. And uh, she wants to continue to not only inspire herself, but others on her journey. You talk about a positive person. Justin Kish is just unbelievable because all she thinks about doing is things that are good for others and that make people feel good. She was an outstanding Muay Thai practitioner, undefeated. Her first loss ever was when she was in the UFC. She can fight both standing and on the ground. She is a handful for anyone. This should be one fantastic flyweight matchup. There was a run of six years between 08 and 14 when she went undefeated in pro boxing, kickboxing, and Muay Thai. Over 20 plus fights. So again, looking to fight the good fight in her first fight in Bellator MMA, but she is in tough against the double tough Deanna Bennett. And now we welcome her opponent, Vienna Bennett. At 37, Deanna Bennett, while well, she has had her fairy tale finish in mixed martial arts, her last fight, John, a huge victory over Alejandra Lara at the Shark Tank, an arena, a venue that means so much to her and her family. It was a venue where her late father spent so much time as both a fan and employee. Yeah, well, he was a, he was a guy who used to do security when Strike Force was the main show at the Shark Tank, putting on great shows, and he would come home and talk to his daughter about it. She had a moment there that was just unbelievable. But this is her moment right now. This is the fight that she needs to be concerned with because this is the fight that can put Deanna Bennett on the map, putting a number by her name and making her somebody who has a shot at getting that championship. And that's the beauty and the beast of this sport. As I mentioned, the fairy tale ending in San Jose. Oh, but here you go. Welcome Justin Kish to the cage and let's do it all over again as we go to the tail of the tape for this flyweight encounter. Well, the real thing I'm gonna point out right now, Moro is 125.4. That is Deanna Bennett making weight because she did not make weight in that last thing. And this was something that was important for her to do. She did it. That should be something that says how ready she is. Let's go to Michael C. Williams. From Mohegan Sun Arena, the prelims here at Bellator 274 continue as we go now to the flyweight division scheduled for three five-minute rounds introducing the blue corner at five foot five, weighing in 125.6 pounds per professional record, seven wins, four losses from Los Angeles, California, Justine the Machine Kid. And across the cage, her adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot four, weighing in 125.4 pounds as a professional. 11 victories, seven defeats, one draw out of Oakhurst, New Jersey, Vienna, Vitamin D Bennett. In charge, your referee, Kevin McDonald. Bennett holds a notable win over UFC Go. women's bantamweight champ Juliana Pena. Now Justine Kish, Southpaw, making her Bellator MMA debut back to Orthodox, and they meet in the center of the cage. So Bennett, with lots of experience, Justine Kish, 
She's had to overcome a lot just to get here, John. And, and in fact, she wondered, was her career over after her stint in the Octagon finished? And she said no, still plenty more hunger. And she wants to prove that there's a lot more left in her proverbial tank here tonight. What she's doing right now, going after Deanna Bennett, big right hands. She needs to get that head a little bit off center like she just did there. That was nice. But don't be the target for Deanna Bennett and don't stay flat on your feet. You want to move because the wrestling will come in at some point. Kish spent time training with Bellator featherweight champion Chris Cyborg Bennett representing Killer B Combat Sports Academy and Dante River Jiu Jitsu lands a left on Kish who again not moving her head off the center line as they come close and a left hook on the exit by Bennett. Yeah, and if there's one thing in, in just watching Justine Kish's fights, she tends to be that Muay Thai practitioner that will right. just take the shot instead of just moving that head just a just a little bit off center line so the, the punch just slides off. Kish trying to befuddle Bennett early, moving from orthodox to southpaw, digging to the body with the left hand was Kish before Bennett responded up top. That was a clean left hook to the body. That's something she needs to continue to go after in this fight. Just missed with a spinning back fist. Plus a flyweight champion, Juliana Velasquez. 12 and 0, sitting atop a, a division where a, a big win tonight by either Bennett or Kiss John would, would definitely put them in the conversation based on, well, the level of competition that they've already faced and the name value that they bring. <laughs> They do have some name value, but Deanna Bennett is starting to feel a little bit better in this fight. You see her starting to come forward a little bit more. Justine needs to take it, use those angles. She's throwing a lot of feints, trying to set Deanna up. Bennett circling away from the cage, back to the center. Superwoman punch attempted. There was a calf kick that landed, but then the counter left upstairs by Bennett. Good exchanges here in the opening round. Yeah, both ladies have been landing, just not that clean shot that's gonna be the difference maker. And Bennett just bulldozing forward, but Kish showcasing her strength, the overhook turning the tables, putting Bennett along the fence. But it is the one thing about Justine Kish when you watch her, she is physically strong. She's not physically fit, but very strong. You can tell when she Whoa. gets in a clinch position, she can hold her own. Nice job of pushing off there. And look at the pressure. Under two minutes left in the first round, back to the center of the cage. Bennett fainting. Kish, head up a bit, hands are low. A lot more head movement out of Deanna Bennett than we see out of Kish. And a lot of those strikes that Kish is throwing are just sliding by. That's, a, that's nice work, see right there. She brings her head inside, nothing touched her. Numbers are close in terms of strikes landed and thrown with Kish a slight edge according to our stats as she backs Bennett up Bennett swinging and then catches a left hand upstairs from Kish Bennett shoots for the single she does not have her hands clasped now she does this could be the one that puts Justine down on the mat yep and all-star weekend slam dunk competition tonight in the FD Slammed up takedown for Deanna Bennett. That was a ride on Air Bennett right there. Nice takedown by Deanna Bennett. And ground and pound from Bennett. Series of left hands to the face of Justine Kish. Side control. Kish looking to utilize the fence to try to reverse. And Bennett says, no way. And this is where we thought that Deanna, Deanna Bennett had a, an advantage in this fight in the top position. She's very heavy on top, she's got good body control, very tough to upset her balance. Bennett, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu brown belt, has two submission wins, but Kish doing a good job controlling her arms as we come to the conclusion of what was an eventful opening five minutes between Deanna Bennett and Justine Kish. Stop. your water put your hands on my shoulders breathe okay, I want you to breathe in through your mouth 
Man, the jab was great. The low kick, I want you to stay on the outside, okay? The outside was good. The reason she got that takedown, you didn't get underhooks, okay? I gotta get underhooks. Don't let her lock her hands together on a double leg, right? I gotta fight that hand. I can't let that hand lock together. Here's some water. I want you to hold it, drink when you want to drink, okay? Stay on the body shot, right? Stay on the fucking low kick. Here's a replay of some of the stand-up action. Kish throws that right hand. It lands clean, but doesn't have a lot of power to it. Seconds but out. it did land clean, comes up, fakes the kick, brings the right hand. Stand behind the line, please. Thank you. Deanna Bennett overshoots on hers, a little off balance. A little bit back. But little eventually, bit this was the difference Perfect. in the round. Deanna Bennett getting a hold of those legs, clasping her hands together, picks her up, and takes her for a ride on Air That's Bennett. It. Brings her down where she wants and does some good ground and pound. Round at number two. Kish with the advantage in the kicking department. Bennett with the advantage in the punching department. A highly competitive first round, and they renew hostilities early here in the second. Bennett, number seven ranked Kish, making her Bellator MMA debut. She would love to crash the top ten by taking out number seven. Absolutely, it's a big moment for Kish coming in to Bellator. She's got a chance to really establish herself in the flyweight division. But after that first round, Deanna Bennett has that look that, oh, I felt you on the ground, and that's where I believe that I can be dominant in this fight. You're gonna be looking for Deanna Bennett to get those hands back around those legs of Justin Kish and get a takedown. to her left, utilizing the right hand as a shield. Trying to perhaps set a trap, maybe trying to get Bennett to bite. Bennett with a short left hand, and really, I think, attempting, John, like you say, to utilize the striking to, to disguise the takedown attempt. Absolutely, and that's a smart way of doing it. Don't be, you don't want to be shooting shots from afar. Never naked. You could be arrested for public indecency. <laughs> Josh Thompson would call it raw dog in it. <laughs> A minute and a half gone here in the second. And there's an oblique kick by Bennett. Pace is slowed down a bit more of a tact tactical affair here in the second. One of the things that Justine is doing, though, is she is squaring off, and she's squaring off because she is worried about that takedown. And that's going to be her way of fighting through it, getting her hands down. Oh, Coach Tom. Beautiful nice axe kick too. there. And you know what? You, you talk about the squared stance, and you're right. And it's, again, Z resorting to her Muay Thai background with a lot of her tactics here in the second with Bennett now along the fence. So Kish, even though it's Bennett feeding her knees, Kish looking for the strike upstairs. But again, Bennett getting the better of that exchange. And based upon her Muay Thai background, I think that Justin Kish can be in the clinch right. with Deanna Bennett and do well. It's when Bennett changes levels and gets into her legs you're going to see her have problems. Speaking of legs, nice body kick by Bennett with the left leg, a lead leg attack, and another body kick as Kish went upstairs with a straight left, back to southpaw, back to orthodox, goes Kish. And we've talked about it, John, at the highest level of MMA these days, you better be comfortable with switch stances. Well, you've got to be. Employing them and you know, fighting them. Both ways. You know, the leg kicks make a big difference, and you've got to be able to switch that leg in and out of there at times. Kish looking for an elbow strike again. Bennett looking for the kick and follows through. Misses with the back fist, lands the left. Now goes for the clinch. Good job of Kish with the wizard here. Defending the takedown, John. Yeah, she's doing a good job with that wizard, but she wanted oh, right there. She made the slip. Half butterfly now into the full guard. Justin Kish from her back. Bennett attacking the body, trying to posture up. Good arm control by Kish as she gets moved to the fence. She gets moved to the fence. She should be looking to get herself back up, get her back up against the fence. Oh, beautiful hip movement here by Kish from the bottom. That's a nice attempt, but she's not going to get that arm bar. So now reset or get your back on the fence. That's going to help you get up. Use it as a balance point. Kish has two submission wins, as does Deanna Bennett. 
coming up on the final 60 seconds of the second round. As expected, competitive contest between Deanna Bennett, who is one and one in Bellator MMA, and veteran Justine Kish in her Bellator MMA debut. Nice little elbows by Deanna Bennett. You're seeing Justine Kish in this position. She can try for that armbar, but Deanna's defending it, and she's landing strikes right now. Justine needs to be careful of not holding on to something too long. He does have an armbar victory, but that came way back in August of 2013 as Bennett from side control under 30 seconds left now for Bennett to work from this dominant position. But well defended by Kish. Kish is doing a good job of keeping herself safe, but you've got to be impressed with what Deanna Bennett is. She hasn't rushed the takedown. Not at all. She's letting. You know, and now hammer well. fist. And when she gets the opportunity, she's landing big shots. And she's trying to finish before the end of the round with some hammer fist, but Kish is controlling her wrists, and Kish will survive round two. Stop! Lean break. Stuff to like from both parties involved here, John. Uh, how do you score that that middle round and why? Well, right now I've got Deanna yeah. Ben up two rounds to nothing. She's, like to it's see. been the difference of hitting Don't the ground. Her. When she's Don't been able her. to get Justine Kiss to the ground, there's really been no answer for all the strikes that she's been able to land. Yeah, she definitely opened up a much bigger lead in the second round when it came to the punching advantage. No doubt about it. Now, Justine Kish has been very effective when she's on her feet. She just needs to figure out a way to keep this. this I believe this is the axe kick here. Take a look. Brings it up. Eh, touched a little bit, but... You know what? It's the attempt. You got to like. The Canadian it. judge gives her a score. A like positive that. score. <laughs> <laughs> but the elbows from the top position. Deanna Bennett. Seconds some of out. them big, some of them small, but they all start to add up. Knees to the body. That was beautiful. All of these just start to break your opponent down. Right, now in the third round, she might be just a little bit Thank less. All hammer fist, clean shots. That's the difference right now in this fight. 37-year-old Deanna Move Bennett, 33-year-old Justine hey. Kish, fight. getting ready to go at it for the final five minutes. And when you look at the adjustments in order to really pull ahead, secure the victory, talk about Bennett, what she needs to do in round three, and then conversely, what Kish needs to do to, on your scorecards, come back and secure the win. Yeah, for Deanna Bennett, I'm not going to say she has to change anything. I think she's been fighting very smart. She's done the right thing, and when she's had the opportunity to get the fight to the ground, she takes it there and she's dominant. For Justine Kish, it's got to be different because you're looking at these strike stats, 35% compared to 54%, and a lot of that comes from the ground. Justine Kish cannot let her back hit the ground again with Deanna Bennett in the top position. Damage over the right eye of Justine Kish, and she is circling to her right. There's a right hand over the top that lands for Bennett. And Kish's corner imploring her, you got to get it, Justine. You've got to go. And I would imagine that Bennett's corner feels the same way. Oh, uh, both corners are in that position right now. They're both feeling like, I need my fighter to do more. But Deanna's doing actually very well. She's nice and relaxed in the stand-up. Now they're up She's against the cage. Yep. Controlling the get into those legs. This is not a good thing for Justine Kish. Kish, well, Shoot going Bennett towards a single. Yeah, able to change levels there, trying to get the takedown. She's one for two in the takedown department. She needs to get her head out of that position right now, because right now, out. Trying to, she's trying to elevate, get that leg up, bring her down. Nice job by Deanna Bennett. Just a more complete game. She can fight on the feet, but when it comes to the wrestling, that's been the big difference between these two right now. There you go, there you go, keep moving. You gotta build a frame, Justine. Don't give it back, Justine. Go to guard. Deanna Bennett's 20th professional fight. Justine Kish, this is her 12th fight as a pro, and the experience of Deanna Bennett controlling from top position, midpoint of the final round. 
really in three-quarter guard right now. She's almost there. All she's got to do is free her knee back to half guard. But Deanna Bennett is exactly where she wants to be, landing oh. shot after shot. Going to the body with some hammer fists as the respective corners look on. Keep on the elbow. Okay. There. Watch that arm throw. Yes, the elbow. Yes. Nice left hand on the ground and pound by Deanna Bennett. She's just, her base is too good. Her hips are heavy. Justine cannot get rid of her. Right now, passing into side control. Just beautiful ground attack by Deanna Bennett. And if Bennett wants to make a statement and send a message, an opportunity here now with less or just over a minute and a half and from side control, Bennett wanting to maximize this opportunity against a Justine Kish. Tell both ladies working very hard right here. Deanna Bennett is the one doing all the damage. I think Justine Kish does need to turn. She needs to do something to get herself off of the ground. You cannot stay underneath Deanna Bennett and think that you're going to win this fight. You've got to get out of here. Right hand lands for Bennett. Ground and pound, wearing down Justine Kish. Under a minute left in this flyweight fight. Bennett looking to make it two straight wins over highly regarded opponents, knocking off Alejandra Lara and what was an upset. And now Justine Kish came in with a lot of high level experience, but looking to well, snap her own personal two fight losing streak. And she now has given up her back. She has given up her back. She's in a turtle position right here, but she can use that cage to help her get up. Now you see the half Nelson by Deanna Bennett. Cranking on that neck, keeping her in a position on the ground. Landon just shot after shot. Justine Kish served up a lethal dose of vitamin D, Deanna Bennett. performance through 15 minutes against the debuting Justine Kish. Look, you got to give it up for Deanna Bennett. She did exactly what she was supposed to do in this fight. That was her route to get the win. Obviously, she ended up going to a judge's decision. She would have liked to have gotten the stoppage, but you, sometimes you can't do that against people that are just incredibly tough like Justine Kish. Take a look at those stats, Morrow. 147 strikes landed compared to 46. We're talking three to one here, and that's pretty good math right there. <laughs> you just look at everything. This was Deanna Bennett's type of fight, and that's why she's going to get the victory. She continues to inspire, was seriously ill last November, spent a long period of time in the hospital, and yet returning here tonight and going a Tough three rounds with Justine Kish, but as you mentioned, John, continuing to show what brought her to the dance, but continuing to show her evolution at the age of 37. She's a much better fighter now at 37 than she ever was in her earlier years, and it's because she always was diving for takedowns. She didn't want to be engaged in the stand-up, and now she does. She's got confidence in her stand-up, and it makes a world of difference in her performance. Biggest lesson that Justine Kish could take away from this fight, win or lose, and I gotta say it before we hear the official decision. You know, the biggest thing she could take away is, look, she, she was in the fight, tough, but she's got to figure out a way to stop someone like Deanna Bennett from getting into her legs. All right, no one can stop Michael C. Williams from delivering the verdict. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to your three judges now at cage side. Your first, Jacob Montalvo scores the fight 30 to 27, while judges Dave Hagen and Doug Crosby both see it the same 30 to 26. All have it for the winner by unanimous decision, Deanna. Vitamin P. The D in vitamin D standing for dominant as Deanna Bennett.
defeats Justine Kish in flyweight action here tonight. Bellator 274 prelims roll on, but before we get back to the action, let's go back to the fight desk where Amanda and Josh are going to be joined by a very special guest. Yes, Mara, that is why fight nights are so fun because a little birdie told us that Mr. Wonderful himself, Phil Davis, was here in the house tonight. Uh, you have a fight coming up. We are going to talk about that in a second. But you're cornering Chance for Encounter tonight. You've known him for, what, 10 or so yeah. years. We haven't seen him since 2017. What do we need to know about him tonight? Man, Chance is great. He's the type of guy you love in the practice room. He's scrappy. He has that Ben Askren type of funk, and he's just constantly hustling for points in the practice room. Somebody you definitely want every fight camp. So let's talk about your fight, though, coming up mm -hmm. in St. Louis. Your fight, Julius Nglixkis. Tough fight, tough opponent. He's good everywhere. Yep. How are you prepare for someone like that? I mean, it's it's all about sharpening my skill set, just making sure the best Bill Davis enters the cage. I'm always in shape. So make sure I'm in great shape. He's coming up. He's looking to take down a high-ranked guy. Always make sure you're in shape, you know, so you can push the pace, push those guys into uh, hot situations that they don't like. Are you going to use your wrestling? Absolutely. <laughs> We're always going to use wrestling. I think John and I are always on you about you're going to use your wrestling. I want to use my wrestling. Hey, what a chance. Chance is going to use his wrestling as well. All right, I can't let you get out of here, all right, without asking you about the finals of the World Grand Prix. Who's going to win it? Who's going to win it? You fought Nemkov. You know, Corey's a good wrestler, ground and pound. He like Corey's hungry. Corey is hungry. But I give the edge to the champion just because he so far has seen, he seemed very, really good when he gets going. When he takes control of the fight, uh, he, he, he really puts his foot on the gas pedal and he doesn't let up. But is his wrestling good enough to stuff Corey Anderson and the reach and range? How's he going to deal with that? I don't know. In my personal experience, once he got going, once we we're deep in the rounds, he's very slippery. Well, I was very slippery. Could have been all my sweat. <laughs> I sweat like an animal. So uh, it, it's very, he's very difficult to take down. He has great instincts. I don't know exactly how good his wrestling is, but he has good instincts. And he's a strong guy. Are you surprised with how fast Josh can house a sandwich? Because he did Absolutely. that during that last fight. I, I took that sandwich out. <laughs> I took it out. And then when I see you up here, I felt like I had to get taller. I was lifting yeah. my seat. Oh, you're good. Hey, what happened to casual Saturdays, huh? We don't do that around here anymore. Okay. No, no. We make him dress up. Okay. It's a rule. It got yeah, shut yeah. down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and he's got the scrub tonight. We try to get that out here, too. Yeah. little memo next time, guys. There you go. A little memo. Uh, thank you so much. I know this is last minute. We can't wait to watch you in March in St. Louis. Good luck. Thank you. Thank wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. <laughs> More prelim action after this. Streets Bellator fans head to bellatorshop.com and gear up in the same apparel the fighters wear. Hot off a career highlight victory. Right off our cut, the buck on the knee. Top contender Neiman Gracie. Gracie wins again. Puts his legendary name back on the line. In a showdown with Logan Storm Storley. Beautiful job by Logan Storley. The man who pushed welterweight champ Yaroslav Amazov to the brink. Could he finish it right here, right now? Who will submit? It is all over! Who will survive? And that's it! Bellator MMA, Gracie vs. Storley. Tonight, live on Showtime. And welcome back into your prelim action. We are getting closer and closer to that main card, kicking off at 9 Eastern on Showtime. Headline by Naaman Gracie going up against Logan Storley there. We'll see who comes out on top. Naaman Gracie saying, look, I know that I am a jiu-jitsu phenom. Got a TKO in his last time in the cage. He was super excited about that. Josh, we're going to take a look at the next fight here at the prelims. We got Aviv Gozali going up against Bobby King. And we're going to talk about Abiy Gozali here in a second. What can we expect from Bobby King? How does he get his fist in the air? Look, Bobby King's just got to keep this fight on the feet. If he can do whatever he can to keep this fight on the feet, it, it definitely 
it's definitely one of those positions where he has a chance to take over this fight. Aviv Gonzalez, his, his best chance of winning is getting this fight to the ground. And I'm telling you right now, with Bobby King, he can keep this fight on the feet. He's got power in his hands. He can press Aviv around. He can make him uncomfortable by keeping this fight on the feet. Aviv, in case people are not familiar, 6-0. All six of those victories have come via submission. Are we going to see that from him tonight? I don't really know what else we're going to see. I mean, I really couldn't tell you what else we would see. He's phenomenal on the ground. He's young. He's talented. He's really aggressive. Beautiful arm bar transitions. He's got beautiful Kimura transitions. But when he gets on your back or he gets around your neck, it's almost every single time. It doesn't matter. Dry or slippery, it doesn't matter. He finds a way to get there, and he finishes. I mean, he had an 11-second submission here with when he rolled in Iminari roll. Worked onto the ankles. Took him a second to get there. Had he got it right off the bat, it would have been probably the fastest submission in Bellator history. He's just transitions. He attacks everywhere. Those are those are hard people to deal with on the ground because some fighters, they're very, they stick with one or two submissions and you know what to prepare for. The arm and guillotine or whatever those are. You know the, the Kimura. Someone's really good at one submission, but his transitions from everywhere. Arm bars, Kimuras, uh, Darces, Anacondas, guillotines. When he gets on your back, it's, he's phenomenal. I left out one small statistic, 6-0, six, six submissions, all six of them in the first round. Uh, we'll see what's going to happen in this one. Mora, we'll send it back down to you. Yeah, Amanda, including the record for fastest submission in Bellator MMA history when he defeated Edward Munovitsky via heel hook in just 11 seconds. Gozali puts his undefeated record on the line against Bobby King. And now ready to make his way to the cage, Bobby King. Bobby King, paying respect to his heritage as well, John. Has won four of his last five fights, but is coming off a loss to Alexander Shabli at Bellator 272 last December to move his Bellator MMA record to one and one. He is 10 and four overall. Growing up in Hawaii, bringing, uh, well, a piece of the islands to uh, the wintry east coast of the United States, John. Look. His last fight is against a stud in Alexander Shabli, a guy that we have a lot of, you know, upside going with because he's so good in the stand-up. He went through a, you know, a good fight, went to a decision. This is absolutely the toughest competition that Aviv Gozali has ever faced. Bobby King in the stand-up is very good. His ground game is good. It's not as good as Aviv. I'm not going to sit there and compare it because Aviv has been on the mat since he was three, but. This is a guy that can definitely give Aviv problems. And if he cannot get Bobby King down, look out. And King under the tutelage of striking guru Dwayne Bang Ludwig, who was in his corner as uh, we get ready. And now set to make his way, Aviv, the King goes highly. Representing his native Israel, we talk about his Bellator MMA record for fastest submission. Hey, he, he gets things done fast, period, as Amanda mentioned. He is 6-0, all six wins via first round submission. Those six submission victories in Bellator tied for third most in company history behind Goichi Yamauchi at eight and Naaman Gracie who will try to tie the record in the main event later tonight against Logan Storling. Look at what we've seen out of Aviv Gozali is he is unbelievable when it comes to the ground game because he does not stop. He transitions from one submission attempt to the next and he finally catches his opponent being so far behind they can't catch up and that submission gets locked in and it is on. 
This kid is amazing, and at 21 years of age, Mauro, you are looking at someone that can have many more years with a lot of wins coming his way. So far, he is, uh, well, been razzle-dazzle just like Michael Jackson, who we heard. And so far, proving to be unbeatable is Aviv Gozali, number nine ranked lightweight against Bobby King. Here are the numbers, John. And you can see the difference. Look, 21 years of age compared to 38, but that 38 is not a bad thing with Bobby King because he's got a lot of experience, and if he uses it, it's going to help him in this fight. And it's a never, never a bad thing when we hear from Michael C. Williams. Tonight here at the Bellator 274 prelims, we're set now for a feature fight three. Five minute rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing first, the blue corner. At five foot nine, weighing in 156 pounds even, his professional record, 10 wins, four losses. He fights out of Kaysville, Utah, by way of Lahaina, Maui, Hawaii, presenting Bobby King. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at five foot ten, weighing in 155.8 pounds. He's undefeated as a professional. Six victories, all by way of submission with no defeats. He fights out of Batyam Israel, introducing Aviv the King Gozali. And the referee in charge, Kevin McDonald. Gozali started training judo at three, Brazilian jiu jitsu at seven. Great fight. Great Bobby fight. King go. feels his greatest strength is, well, where he comes from as a fighter. The, the islands of Hawaii, where John, we know that fighting is in their DNA in the, in the best of ways. Oh, there's no doubt it's in their DNA. Let's scrap it off. That is just part of the Hawaiian culture. Aviv Gozali, you know, we know about his ground game, but he's been working on his stand-up game with Ray Longo at Law MMA. He believes it's a big difference now in the way he went after the fight in the stand-up position. We're seeing him feel pretty calm nice. going after Bobby King here. Combination that culminated with a left hook that landed. There's a calf kick to the lead leg of King. So Gozali already mixing up his striking. In the first minute, Owen catches King with a left as King though took it, came forward, gets tagged again upstairs by Gozali, but then catches Gozali. Gozali got rattled by that shot. You see oh, right he's now. still got on his bike. He's on it. Escapes on ice. And King looking to crown Gozali. Gozali looking for the takedown. Stopped by the fighting Hawaiian. But now Gozali jumping to his back and looking to secure the arm of King. And not a bad thing by Gozali. He was getting he was getting the worst of it in the stand-up. Right now, this is his world. Look at that arm is already locked in place. It is not a triangle yet, but it's close. Bobby King needs to be very careful of where he's at. Gozali looking for his first triangle choke of victory. He's going after the arm. Nice job by Bobby King. King alleviating the pressure, stacking Gozali and escaping. Very smart. See what I talked about, the experience. That's what Bobby King just showed right there. Stepping back, allowing himself to get back to a standing position. Oh, and Gozali off balance on his back, and King, he'll want Gozali on his feet, knowing full well, 6-0 with oh, six first round submissions, and already having been tested, all the Gozali was looking for the elbow, and it was King that landed the counter right. Absolutely, he did. Right now, Bobby King, he is landing the clean shots in the stand-up. Javier Gozali is having problems. And this is what happens when you're a young fighter. You know, all of that training and everything is great, but getting into the cage under the lights and making it work. Oh, the left hand worked for Bobby King, catching Gozali, and King unloading on Gozali, but now Gozali!
running out of real estate along the fence, John. Well, he's running out of real estate. Everyone is what's happening in this cage. He is still hurt. Oh, yeah, he, he is trying to steady figure. on his feet. And look at how straight up and down he is. His chin is high. Bobby King lighting up Bobby Gozali, and yet Gozali still standing, but for how much longer? Notice that Bobby King is not crushing his space. He's actually moving back, giving himself room, so those strikes, he's not getting all crushed in. They're landing clean. King looking for the third knockout win of his career. The first came in the first round, and he has Gozali in trouble. Gozali now looking to take advantage of his submission skills. A minute left in what has been an action-packed first frame. This unbelievable action by both. Habib Gozali doing everything he can to get this fight down to the ground. Oh, but not moving his head. Oh! Gozali will not give in on this. Now the Omoplata by Bobby King. That's what exactly goodness. what he should be doing. What a Bobby first King should go right back to that strike for Bobby King. Gozali is not going to give in on the submission. He will give in on those strikes. Hammer fist, ground and pound. Gozali rolling through, but my goodness, you could not ask for a better first round. Bring on round two. Hey, Gozali can take a shot, partner. Well, he can take a shot, but it's his grappling that he's able to at least turn his hips, get himself in a position to make him look like he can defend. That's keeping the referee off of him, but he's taking too many shots, Paul. Watch these shots. That was a clean left, but watch the shots that Aviv Gozali comes into. He ends up eating a big right hand right there. You see him going down to the ground, but again, starts to roll. He's looking for that leg. Look at how high the chin gets. And when the chin gets high, trouble. Bobby King comes up, touches it. This is the last one that puts him down. That was a big right hand and another. I don't know how much more Aviv Gozali can take when it comes to the striking battle. Time. Wow, John, time. he still Medical looks timeout. unsteady. Before we start the round, and the doctor is going to come me. in and right check on event. Gozali. Just the body language right now with Vico Gozali is saying that, you know what, the doctor's probably not going to let this go on. because Aviv Gozali speaks English, and he's trying to say that, oh, he speaks Hebrew. That is not true, and they're giving more time to him to recover. Bobby King does have a complaint. Gozali's absorbed 47 strikes. 46 of them have been punches, the majority to the face. What are trying to ask him? This is just absolutely, you know, I've had situations kind of like this. You cannot allow that fighter right now to be in this position because he speaks English. That's Mike Mazzulli you see outside of the cage telling the father, Hazi, what? Haim to get out. Mazzulli from the commission. Yep. Haim goes all the father was in there trying to talk to him. And it's cut. over. It should be. Bobby King. Crowns of Eve Gozali and Bobby King. My crown! Don't ever take my crown! My crown, yes! A huge victory. Aviv Gozali unable to continue after the first round, and Gozali taste defeat for the first time, and how sweet.
sweet is that victory for 38-year-old Bobby King? We talked about the maturity at 38, and would that be the difference? And it was because he made great decisions during the fight. When he could get himself back to his feet, Mink goes all the way to his feet. Very smart attack by Bobby King. Let's go, my way! And Bobby King just put the ow in Lu Hao as the Hawaiian, the hard-hitting Hawaiian, records the TKO over the previously unbeaten Aviv Gozali. King made his Bellator debut at Bellator 260 in June of last year, defeating Nick Newell via split decision. We talk about the loss to Alexander Shabali, but hey, last time he took it out, but he definitely bounced back in impressive Woo! fashion tonight. And for Aviv Gozali, being forced to uh, absorb that bitter taste of defeat and uh, get safety of the fighter. Always Let's paramount. And he just still does not look steady on his feet. So we await to make it official with Michael C. Williams, but it will go down as a huge win for the 38-year-old Bobby King. All right, here's Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, upon the advice of the cake side position, referee Kevin McDonald waves off the contest. Official time, five minutes, round number one. The winner by TKO, Bobby. Big John McCarthy will talk to the winner. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with your winner, Bobby King. Bobby, that was an incredible first round. You landed some big shots on him. He went down, but his ground attack did give you some problems. How much danger did, was that arm? Uh, I think I felt my arm pop a little bit, so it was pretty dangerous. He almost had that arm lock and the figure four, but... I knew that's what he wanted. I wasn't going to let him have it. Wanted to stop the hype train. He was calling himself the king. That's my name. We got one king in here, and that's me. Your last name is King, so you should own it. But let's talk about your maturity in the fight, because I thought that was a big difference. You were smart. Once you had that one moment with the arm, you kept backing off, getting him to stand back up, going to your strength with your strikes. Did you have a feeling at a certain point near the end when you actually went on the ground that you were going to be able to finish it in that round? Yeah, when I had him, when I was hitting him with those hammer fists, I heard the ref say, uh, you got to move. So I was trying to count the, the, the hammer fist, and then luckily he moved out of the way and he got out, but I thought I was going to finish him for sure. Let me, what was your thought process after the first round ended and then you were going to start the second? What were you thinking when you saw all of that happening in the corner? Well, I, was in, I, I knew he wasn't going to come back out. So the doctor come in. He wasn't responding to what the doctor was saying. I wanted him to come back out, honestly, because I wanted to knock him out and prove a point. But I'm glad he's safe. He's a good guy. And I hope he recovers quick. Well, you did everything but knock him out. That was an outstanding win. Congratulations on a big victory. Take it away, an undefeated record. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the real king, Bobby King. A performance fit for a king as Bobby King serves up the Hawaiian punch here at Bellator 274. Let's go back to Amanda Garrett. Mara, thank you. A lot of tension in that one. Uh, Josh, as a former fighter, I mean, you, you know what Aviv must have been feeling like in that, but as you heard Big John say, you think it was the right call, too. First, let's talk about Mara. Hawaiian punch, the big punch in the <laughs> Wow. It was, that was awesome. That, this is what Mara does. Yes, I love it. On He's the great. fly, he doesn't think about it. Kudos to you, Mara. Uh, I love that. Uh, overall, though, Big Big John was talking everyone through it. Every, everyone that was at home was listening. Too much time. You don't. Everyone knows you speak English. There was a hesitation there. I get trying to drag it around a little bit, but then it starts to look bad. And then Mike Mazzulli had to come in. Overall, great job by the commission, making sure they did. They called the fight. He had taken some big shots early in that first in that first round. He was looking good on the feet. Then he started taking big shots. There was no answer. 
It was good that they stopped the fight when they did. Great job by the commission. Talked about him standing up, and then all of a sudden, he just kind of went backward there a little bit with nothing on him. Uh, congratulations to Bobby King. All right, our main card tonight, we got to talk about it, because kicking that off, we have a battle of heavyweights. There's a little bit of tension here. Devion Franklin, who literally burst onto the scene in 2020, he drove from Atlanta to New Mexico, convinced Jackson Wink to take a look at him, and he jumped Saeed Soma in the rankings there, as you see, eight or nine respectively. Soma isn't too happy about that, Josh. Set this one up for us. He has every right to be upset. He's just coming off a win against Minikoff. He should be ahead of him. Minikoff is the former Bellator heavyweight champ. But look, let's be honest. This fight, though, there's a lot to be desired. Davion Franklin, he's got big power in his hands, super explosive, very athletic, big, big knockout power. He puts together punches and bunches. Really, he's got good wrestling, stuff takedowns. But you can see, when he touches you, your lights are out. Now, Soma, Soma's on a different level, though, right now, in terms of he puts everything together very well. With Ronnie Marks, he just walked Ronnie Marks down, touching him, putting it together with the kicks and the punches. He's a slow starter. So as this fight goes on, he's got to be careful with Damian Frank. He's got a fast starter. But when he fought Minikov in Russia, by the way, I want to let everyone understand that, that's a tough task. He went out there, leg kicks were the key. He was dominating the fight as the fight went on longer and longer, and that's what Soma does. He starts controlling the tempo, and he starts making you fight his fight. And when he does that against Franklin tonight, Franklin's in for a hard fight. It's a little personal when it comes to this one. We cannot wait to watch it's it. It's about dragging him into deep waters when you know you're the lighter guy and you've got the condition to go the distance. That's all he's got to do. That is the first fight kicking off our main card tonight, 9 Eastern on Showtime. But for now, more, we'll send it back down to you. All right, Amanda, B274. That's Bellator 274. Bantam Waits about to take center stage. The unbeaten Jalen Bates collides with Chris DeSonnell, who has won back to back bouts. And now, we welcome to the cage, Chris Chopin's DeSonnell. Hey, Mr. Showbiz put on a show in his last fight against a guy known for show business, Will Smith. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So maybe not the one you want to get jiggy with, but hey, he got busy with him because he stopped him in the first round with his punches and uh, showbiz diz as he is known looking to put in a put on a show tonight like he's done in the past. Well, he put on a show at that night. Look at that. But bends his opponent backwards and then just puts on the whooping. He is a very tough individual. There is no stop in showbiz Diz. He will go after you. He will take a shot to give a shot. He's a guy that you have got to get rid of because he's going to be in your face the whole fight. And now his opponent, Jalen Newbreed. So far, so good for Jalen Bates. He is a perfect 4-0 to begin his professional career. All of his fights have come under the bright lights of Bellator MMA and uh, picked up, well, he's picked up three consecutive submission wins, John, so definitely a menace on the ground. Uh, he is good everywhere. This kid can wrestle. He's got great submissions just swinging in to the arm bar there and just holding on to it, understanding his hip position and where he's at. This kid understands the game of MMA. His striking is clean. Like I said, his wrestling is good. He's got the full package. His three stoppage wins in Bellator Bantamweight competition tied for second most in the division's history behind Eduardo Dantas with four. Speaking of the numbers, John. Real simple, take a look at the difference there, 73.5 to 67.5, a big reach advantage for Jalen Bates. We'll see if it, Chris can get inside and do his work. Three letters say it all, M, C, W. To all of those staying up late night in the UK with us on BBC iPlayer, we thank you for joining us here at Bellator 274 here at the prelims. We'll go now to three five-minute rounds in the Bantamweight division. Introducing the blue corner at five foot seven, weighing in 135.2 pounds. His professional record, six wins, four losses from Alpha. 
Albany, New York, Chris Shopis Dissonel. And across the cage, his adversary fighting out of the red corner at 5'10", weighing in 136 pounds even as a professional. He's undefeated, four victories, no defeat, out of Lakewood, California, Jalen Newbreed Bates. In charge, your referee, John English. New breed Jalen Bates with featherweight kingpin AJ McKee in his corner. Chris Disamel oh, hoping to Ray, hang the first right L on, on Bates. Go. Pristine record. We are underway, Bates in the southpaw stance. Back toward the docks and the spin kick in time by Disamel, but the scramble and Bates not only back up to his feet, John, but delivers a, a knee up the middle. Yeah, just that's what we're talking about with this kid's good everywhere, his athletic ability, his confidence. You tell you, you're, Josh Thompson talks about tall, long, and lanky. For a, well, for a bantamweight, this guy is long, and he is lean, and he's mean. He goes after his opponent the whole fight until he gets the finish. Bantamweight division buzzing with the announcement of the Grand Prix as a takedown by Disonnell. And of course, Sergio Pettis with one of the greatest knockouts in Bellator MMA history against Kyoji Huraguchi to close out the year. But now it's Disanel, top position on Bates. And Disanel trying to move to full mount, but there's an elevator, or excuse me, the butterfly hooks being employed by Bates. Bates using a beautiful butterfly guard, giving Chris nothing but trouble, and now, Jalen is in the top position. This is where he does devastating work. And you don't want to give him your back and now taking. I, very nice job by yeah. Chris to get back, back to, his, to feet. his feet. Battle for wrist control. Minute and a half gone in the opening round. Bates. Short knees to the right leg of Disanel as Bates diligently trying to bring him to the mat does so. And now in a position to take his back completely. Look at where those legs are at. Chris is not in a good position, doesn't want to be here. There's father and son, Antonio and AJ McKee from Team Body Shop in Bates Corner. Of course, McKee will defend his crown for the first time against former champion Patricio Pitbull. Without a doubt, one of the most loaded lineups in Bellator MMA history, Friday, April 15th at the Shark Tank in San Jose. No doubt about it, but you see right now, Chris is trying to keep himself high with Jalen's back up on the cage. Not a lot of space for him to move. Jalen just doing good work, staying calm, composed, still in a position to take Chris where he wants. Chris has been unable, to, in that hand fighting war, he's been an, unable to get rid of those hands. He's broken them apart twice, but the hands keep on coming back together. And the knee from Bates trying to change levels, trying to secure the double leg. You got to And him scoops up. him up and puts him down. But it's just an L from his back trying to make things happen. Instead, gets tagged by Bates. Up kick attempt by Disanel. And right hand and a left staples Disanel as he gets back to his feet. Two clean shots by Jalen right there. That was very well done. Again, just showing that he is competitive. Oh, beautiful jump knee right there. Just his ability to do different techniques when his opponent does not expect those things to happen. Coming up on the final 90 seconds of the opening round where Jalen Bates is three for five in the takedown department. Make that four for six. But it's Disanel looking underneath there, John, for something. Yeah, he was looking for Kamura, but he does not have the position to make that work, so it's smart for him to let go of it. Needs to use that fence, get his back up against the cage, and again, start trying to work his way back to his feet. He's been taking a lot of shots. 
Jalen's been very successful. Beautiful timing on Jalen Bates, bringing the knee up high. Final half minute of the opening round. Bates at 4 0. His four fight Bellator winning streak at 135. Tied for the second longest active streak in the division behind Rafion Stotts with five consecutive wins. And definitely someone who is looking to make the most out of the opportunity in that Bantamweight World Grand Prix. Rafion Stotts is just a stud. That's why they call him Super. And Bates wants to prove that he is a stud and off to a good start here against Chris Disonnell. Great first round. And look at the uh, the bling on the featherweight champions. That belt around the waist of AJ McKee and Madden, the ability to manifest yeah. that right. million hey, dollar can, check that he wrote to himself as a child. Right Think about that, there. John. Oh, Actually oh, able to cash a million dollar check feel? winning the Grand Prix. A fantastic moment for him, but he, look, he's been he's been just put in line to be that guy. Set up to succeed. Since he was a young kid, right. since I first met him and he was small in wrestling. The guy is just an athlete. He's smart. And now they're helping Jalen Bates to succeed. Yeah, and Jalen is very much like AJ when you're looking at what he can do and the whole mentality part. The one thing that AJ can bring to Jalen is Jalen is super confident. Sometimes that confidence can bite you in the butt when you don't train hard. AJ has been in those situations it can give him that experience of no no you got to outwork your opponents every time AJ McKee icy like a hockey puck as we get ready for round number two, Red, round two. who will shoot and who will score here Chris Disonnell definitely has to get on track try to find a way to solve the riddle that is Jalen Bates Jalen Bates has really brought in that side kick. Oh, slips on that body kick attempt. Well, he was off balance and he got, he got touched, and that's why he went down. But he's been really looking towards bringing that foot up, using a side kick to the thigh, up to the face. Chris is just trying to figure out the puzzle right now. It's always that missing piece. Oh, a jumping and a dynamic attack by Jalen Bates on showbiz. Diz, it's up. Uh, well, Bates is putting on the show thus far. Well, he's been uh, just a variety of different offensive attacks. And even when he gets, gets in the clinch, just the knees. He's not only bringing knees to the thigh, he brings them down to the calf. Look at those strike stats right now. Four of 17 compared to 30. That's a big difference right now. Chris needs to figure out a way to slow this down and gain control. Yeah, just now not enjoying his stay at the Bates Hotel thus far. He'll definitely want to uh, avoid going to the shower early, John, because here against Bates, who is really controlling all aspects, dictating the terms, just missing with that spinning back fist. And you talk about his confidence and where it's at. You don't want to make any reckless mistakes in trying to make a statement. No, you don't want to make rec reckless you know, mistakes, but you got to be who you are also. And Jalen has this toolbox with all these tools in it, and he wants to use them all. He just needs to pick the proper timing and which tool to use. And for Disonnell, he needs to try to find a way to disrupt that timing, break the rhythm, and, and really ratchet up the offense. And I know that's easier said than done against a guy who was, brings the the style of Jalen Bates. But for Chris Disonnell at 6-4, and 1-0 here in Bellator with the TKO triumph. You know, as we mentioned all the time, every fight, especially on the prelims, remain an audition for bigger things. Absolutely, but the one thing, if you're looking at Jalen right now, what he needs to do is he, he's throwing ones. He's just throwing one punch, one kick, one punch, backing out. It's got to be in combinations because it's not the one that's going to end up hurting your opponent. It's the one that he doesn't see. It's the two, three. That would be the difference right now in what I'd want to see out of Jalen. Well, Bates are, is throwing ones. Uh, just an L throwing zeros. Yes. <laughs> Team. There's a counter kick by Disonnell past the midpoint of the round and the fight here in the bantamweight division. Jalen Bates continues to blossom under the tutelage of Antonio McKee rolling. And now Disonnell looking to take advantage 
here with some hammer fists and ground and pound. Nice the unpredictability of MMA. Well, right now, this is obviously in a position to take the back. He's looking to sink that choke, but he doesn't have his legs. It doesn't mean he can't get it. His, but with someone like Jalen, who understands the game, it's not going to be easy. Dissonel's lone submission win was via rear naked choke, but not that time. Bates back on his feet, back on the hunt. But you're right, Jalen Bates missed opportunity perhaps here in the second round, John, with what transpired in the first frame? Absolutely, you know, you take a look at what's happening. He can build on that, he has it, based upon that. Wow, good great distribution by Disonel and nice scramble by Bates. And Disonel working the wizard here, a minute 17 left in the second round. Just be careful since he's into that leg on the single, exactly what it is. You right into up, side control. Holding on to something, and, and you can see what's going to happen, but you, you think, oh, I might get it. You're not going to get it. Set yourself up later. And now Bates has Dissonel's back. And this could prove to be a nightmare for Chris Dissonel. Dissonel controlling both arms right now. He's safe in this position right at this second, but he needs to be careful. Yeah, Dissonel's lone submission loss was via rear naked choke. And Bates is looking for that RNC to record his fifth consecutive victory with 30 seconds left in the second. It's on the chin. It's not comfortable right now for Chris, but he has not slid down to where he cannot defend. He's trying to grab that hand on top, He's trying to push that elbow up. Palm to palm now on it. There is a squeeze. You should see Jalen really extending his lips into the lower back. That will cause Dissonel to have a problem. The clock may be Dissonel's biggest ally, and it will prove to be as we go to round three. Interesting round. Very interesting round, and it was a it was a good round for Chris Dissonel all the way up to the point where that back was taken, and then that's what ends up losing in the round. He took a lot of shots. There was the submission attempt. It was not good, but it took the round for Jalen Bates. I have Jalen Bates up now, two two nothing. Chris needs to really come and do something to take this fight back. And this was right here when he gets this point. Look at Bates, you can tell. And you see Chris holding on to that, looking towards a guillotine. It's not going to be there. Bates is able to take him down. Beautiful job by Jalen Bates. Great body positioning because when he takes him down, he gets to that, that side control. And then the back control here. At one point, it got close. You saw him when he went palm to palm on the choke. But he needed to engage his hips more, create more extension on Chris to get that choke to work. You good? You good? Last one, boys. Let's go. Third and final round. Bantamweights, Jalen Bates, 4-0 and with three submission wins. Chris Dissonel, 6-4 and with two knockouts and a submission victory. Dissonel representing Hensel Gracie Latham and shots of boxing. While Jalen Bates representing Team Body Shop, Antonio McKee and his son, Bellator featherweight champion AJ McKee in Bates' corner. Oh, the left hand catches Bates. He's got the pass right there. You see his knee. Pressing down on the thigh, he's going to have that pass. He's trying to work his right leg over the top. He should not worry about that. He's going to get too high. Just take the position, either settle in in the half guard or start moving yourself to side control. Bates dropping some hammer fists and left hands, mixing it up as Dissonel trying to control his posture, but Bates looking to move to side control if possible. Smart move by Jalen Bates. Landed some good hammer fist in there. It was up. <laughs> it is inside. But it is crushed down, too. There you go. Another big right hand by Bates. Nice left 
hand is slipped in there by Jalen. At any moment, I feel like we're going to see vintage Mauricio Shogun or Fedor Emelianenko, you know, diving into the, the guard. The Bucks could position of this enough. Coming up on three minutes remaining in this Bantamweight fight. Bates putting his weight on Disanel. Yeah, the position of Disanel's head keeps him from being able to elevate Bates. He's putting a lot of pressure down on that head. He's going to come around behind him. And let's uh, listen in to Bates' corner, the McKees. And of course, on cue, John, <laughs> nothing is being said. Thank you, McKees. Always money. No, it's kidding. They, they're, they're satisfied with what they're, they're very saying. satisfied right now. They know he's. But are you? But show, I mean, obviously, doing a lot of right things, and yet always wanting to continue to show growth and and make statements, John. Well, hey, even all in the cage. Done. You know, right now he's being Just smart with what he's doing. Right now here. he goes for the hook. When he saw Disnell extend himself. He went for the hook to get take his back. Nice job. He was heavy on the hips before. And now he's getting the choke set. If he takes that palm to palm, if he pushes with his legs, extends his hips into the lower back of Disanel, and he gets that arm in position, he'll get the choke. It's there. All he needs to do, go palm to palm on it. The extension of his hips, pushing the back of Disanel will make that choke work when he decides to go for it. begin his professional mixed martial arts career and he just picked up his fourth consecutive submission win first via rear naked choke job as Chris tried to roll through he was unable to get that Granby roll through Jalen just blocked it and from this position ends up getting his hooks takes the back and just slowly and systematically works towards that rear naked choke and finally you see him when he gets that Madaleon locked in place there was nothing for Chris Disanel to do other than tap or take a nap you're a handy man around the house. How high is the ceiling for Jalen Bates in a bantamweight division that, let's face it, one of the, the best in the sport? You know, it, the ceiling is very high for him because of his athleticism and what he can do, but he needs to start being smarter about what he is doing in the cage. Let's make it official with Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end. Three minutes, 39 seconds, round number three, the tap by way of the rear naked choke, the winner by submission, Jalen Newbreed Bates. He has proven to be a submission magician. Jalen Bates maintains his perfect record now 5-0. and oh, All of his fights here in Bellator MMA as we go back to the fight desk and Amanda Guerra. Mora, it's very nice to talk to you as always. Getting ready for our main card tonight, highlighted by some of the best welterweights who both want a shot at the title, and they are oh so close. Name and Gracie sitting at four right now, Logan Sorley at five, and Josh, whoever wins this could get a shot at that title. How does each of them do it? Well, they're both very impressive fighters. Both of them have ways of winning this fight. But with Logan Storley, to be honest, he's got to take this fight to the ground. And on taking this fight to the ground, he's got to make sure he doesn't get sucked into the guard. And in that process of being of getting the takedowns, he needs to pass the guard, stay to the side control position or the mount position if he can get to it on Naaman Grayson and let go of the ground and pound. Now, when I talk about his ground and pound, he's got great elbows. He's got great combinations from the top. He used the body, body, head, but he throws a lot of tenacity behind it. A lot of power goes into it. He doesn't just arm punch. He's got great control, and the one thing he does very well is he can scramble to a dominant position. He is a phenomenal wrestler, there's no doubt about it, but when he gets in that top position, he can do some work. 
Now he's got to make sure he's careful. What I mean by do work, though, is he's got to posture up, deliver his shots, and then cover back over if he feels like he's not knocking Neyman Gracie out. Because if he allows Neyman Gracie to get underneath him, Neyman Gracie will start to go for the leg locks and arm bars and all of those. Now, Neyman Gracie, what he's got to do is just be himself. I feel like he's got the tools to take this fight anywhere. We saw in his last fight against Leminger, his stand-up is vastly improved since being at King's MMA. Now, in the top position in his wrestling pedigree, all of those things are getting better as he's there at King's MMA with Javier Cordero. He is a well-rounded fighter, one of the best in the game, and I'll continue to say as he got a little upset when I said it the other day. He is the <laughs> best Gracie that has ever stepped inside the cage, and we talked with Henzo Amanda. You and I caught him in the lobby on the way here. He's like, you're absolutely right, and I want you to say that. I want you to keep telling people that he is the best Gracie that's been in the cage. That was from Henzo Gracie. He's their well-rounded fighter, and I think tonight you're going to see even more tools and an even better Henzo than we saw the last two fights. Look, and, and, and it's true. He very well be maybe the best Gracie. And look, he loves the five rounds. He said, my family is known for the long fights and the longest in history. I want it to be longer. Uh, we'll see how it plays out tonight. For now, Mora, we'll send it back down to you. All right, Amanda, set for our final preliminary bout of the night here at Bellator 274. Mandel Nalo getting set to go up against Nick Brown. Important matchup at 155. And now set to make his way to the cage, Nick Nitro Brown. Nick Brown is 31 years of age, fighting out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and he's on a five-fight winning streak. And has uh, looked impressive, especially in that last fight, pulling off a rare heel hook submission win over Bobby Lee at Bellator 268 last October. A very clean win by Nick Brown. This guy is good everywhere. He's just not that guy that you look at. He's not dynamic in anything. He's just solid everywhere. Nice roll through here, right to the knee bar, unlocks the legs and just slowly takes that leg and straightens it out, putting a lot of pressure. Look at the beautiful technique there, a lot of strain on it. This guy can fight. He's good in the stand-up. His ground game is outstanding. A black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, he's just not the guy that you go, he's flashy. He's not. He's just good. Yeah, and he's just 1-0 in Bellator MMA following that scintillating <laughs> submission win. <laughs> And now, here's the opponent, Mandel Nalo. Let's not bury the headline here, Big John. Mandel Nalo, one of the great nicknames in combat sports history. And who else? <laughs> Rat garbage. And when we asked him about it, he gave us a money quote. I like thinking about what a rat would do to survive, especially when it comes to the context of a fight. Everyone wants to be a lion, but a rat will do anything to survive. That's what I want to do in my fight. And hey, he's done more than survive. He has thrived. He is eight and one, and he's had some fantastic finishes. Well, we talk about, you know, Nick Brown being this guy who's so solid. We're talking, Mandel Nalo is dynamic at times. Look at him here, just taking apart his opponent in Cardo Texas. He it's a bird, a guy it's a plane. Look at that beautiful straight shot off the Superman punch. He's got everything. He just needs to fight more, in my opinion. And under the tutelage of TriStar's guru, Firas Sahabi, of course, man who helped GSP to legendary status. And now Mandel Nalo and Nick Brown, they get set to go at it. Lightweight, very important matchup. How about the numbers, John? Very important matchup. Look at these guys both, eight and one and 12 and one. Both these guys outstanding in the cage. This should be fantastic. Here's Michael C. Williams. Here at Mohegan Sun Arena, we get set now to conclude the Bellator 274 prelims as we go three five-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing the blue corner at 5'11", weighing in 155.2 pounds, his professional record, 12 victories, just one loss out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Nick Nyquil. And 
across the cage is adversary out of the red corner at five foot 11, weighing in 155.4 pounds as a professional. Eight wins, only one defeat out of Toronto, Canada, presenting Mandel Red Garbage Mello. In charge of the action, referee John English. We're both from Canada, but somewhere along the way, uh, Nalo lost the RA in his last name. John Mendel, Nalo, eight Major and good. one with one no contest, four Round knockouts, four on. submissions. Nick Brown, 12 and one with two knockouts, six submissions. This is round number one. And Brown immediately on the attack with the right. Cap kick by Nalo. Both guys know how good their opponent is. It's been that pressure by Nick Brown. That's what he needs to do in this fight with Nalo. Yes. I believe that Mandel's got the speed advantage in this, but Nick Brown is a pressure fighter who gets in your face and makes you fight his fight. And Brown wants to neutralize that high-flying offense of Nalo. When you look at Nalo's four knockout wins, one via Superman punches we saw, one via flying knee, two via head kick. So uh, he, he knows how to put on a KO show. He does, and he's just good everywhere in the cage. His ground game was fantastic, too. He's a black belt jiu-jitsu under Freya Sahabi. Just unbelievable skill level. And as we mentioned with Brown, the BJJ black belt, half of his 12 victories have come via submission. A minute gone here in round one. Nice little trip there by Nick Brown. Great job of getting into it by Nick Brown. Elevates him up. Oh, just that was outstanding. Was able to stop the slam and then jump right back to his feet, digging for the underhooks. And on the exit, Brown delivers a right hand down the middle. But Brown has shown early signs, take pressuring Nalo, and again, going on the attack. But Brown is very square when he's coming into him. You see how he's coming towards him? He has got to be in a position where Nalo is unable to hit him. And right now, as he comes in, he's taking a chance. So Rat Garbage has got the rat tail going for him as well, Josh. Yeah. Nalo. That should never be done. <laughs> Two minutes gone in the opening round. I just had the... Uh, the visual of when Frank Shamrock showed me a picture of him having a rat tail in the day. Another MMA legend as we continue. Two minutes, 45 seconds left here. There is a nice right hand that landed for Nello. That right hand stone, no doubt and about yes, it. yes, and it forced Brown to go looking for the takedown. Good pressure again by Nick Brown, though. It's he got stung by that. He's still sticking with his game plan. He knows he needs to pressure Mandel. Oh! Deciding to separate here. You have the advantage right now in this because Brown's ball. taking big chances. Nice takedown defense exhibited by Nalo coming up on the final two minutes of the opening round. Both fighters have had their moments as we expected in what we thought would be a highly competitive affair. Yeah, what I thought was going to be the difference was the jab of Nalo, but it's really been his right hand. He has landed that thing accurately and hurt Brown twice. And he just chopped away again that calf kick. And another calf kick that's timed by Brown, but again, well defended by Nalo. Brown trying his best to work for the takedown, John, but Nalo doing a good job. Great hips by Nalo. And looking Locked for that answer. Yep, you got a condom attempt. He's got the position. We'll see if he drops down and turns with it. He has four submission wins, three via rear naked choke, one arm triangle. Now in north south position on Brown. He's already let go of that choke, though. He knows he wants to come around. Oh, switching back. He's going back to the Anaconda. He's got the leg. He's got a chance at it. Brown understands how to defend. He's got to keep that leg. That is tight. You see him, Brown, starting to force his way out. Nice job by Brown. He's out of that as far as the pressure. Nice escape by Nick Brown. As it was Mando Nalo that was hoping to make Nightwell go night-night. 
But Brown escaped the submission attempt. Final 40 seconds of the first, and again, countering the calf kick. Brown looking for the, the back of Nalo and delivering some right hands under the armpit. Now getting himself up against the cage to use it as a balance point. Right back, gets the underhook. Very nice job by Mandel Nalo. Nick Brown just being a blanket, just continuing to go forward after Nalo. Evan Flo, the opening five minutes between Nalo and Brown. Each fighter had their moments, John. Your unofficial scorecard reads what and why. Oh, no doubt Mandel Nalo takes that round. That's a 10-9 round, almost 10-8. We need to take a look at some of the damage he did. He dropped him twice. He did enough damage, you think, to... No, I don't. That's why I'm going to say almost a 10-8. If there was 10-8-5, I would go 10-8-5. No, and Brown had, like you said, he did have his moments as well, but unable to capitalize. If anything, showed good defense. And also think about that, an that an anaconda yes. joke. It was set at one time. He was able to work his way out. Yeah, yeah. Left hand, right hand. Look at that thing. That drops him down. You see his hand go back. That's telling you he's still there. He's, it's not like he's flash knocked out, but it definitely hurts to see that hand go back. That's yep. telling you he's there, but it was a great shot. Right, Look at that low out. kick. That leg's getting eaten up on that outside. Mandel Nalo doing a lot of really good work. Mandel Nalo has never been to the judges as a pro. Longest fight, 11 minutes, 16 seconds. Opening minute. This is the 11th minute of this fight, John, against Nick Brown. Boy, he just missed that right hand. It was it hit, but just wasn't quite on target. A lot of power on it. And it was expected that Brown would be one of Nalo's toughest oh, opponents. No doubt about it. I thought this would be a very tough fight just because Nick Brown sticks with what he's best at. He never gives up on it. Nick Brown's five-fight winning streak hanging in the balance, catches the kick, driving Nalo to the fence. That was a good right hand by Nick Brown. That, that touch, Nalo, he felt it. All this pressure, this is good for Nick. He needs to keep this fight close at range. He is at a deficit in this clinch. This is good for him. Shoulder strikes by Nalo as Brown delivering just some glancing blows to the body, trying to remain busy. Nick really having a good overhook on that right arm. Still to come tonight, of course, main card culminates with a pivotal matchup at 170 pounds. Naaman Gracie, Logan Storley meeting in the first five-round non-title main event in Bellator MMA history. That's coming up later tonight on Showtime. Here we conclude the prelims, round three of this lightweight matchup between Mandel Nalo and Nick Brown. Brown looking to secure the takedown defended by Nalo. Well, he was on that singly. I do like the fact that at least when he knew he was not going to get it, he tries for that strike to finish it off. We'd like to see a little more dynamic action, especially again, John, with so much at stake in their respective careers. Now less than three minutes left here in the second. And there's Good the shot. attack by Brown on Nalo. Nick Brown dropping Mando Nalo at the midpoint of the round and fight. And it may not go much longer. It is over. Nick Brown has knocked off Mando Nalo. And Nick Brown going to town with his ground. Talked about Nick Brown just sticking with what he does. That's what we just saw. He's hung in tough, ended up landing the big shot. You know it's going to be asked. Do you agree with the stoppage? Yeah, because As we see the replay here. Mandel Nalo ended up stopping. Take a look. Big shot. He gets folded back, and Nick goes after him. Almost knee and belly position, then switches to the mount and opens up. Look at what Mandel Nalo doesn't do anything to stop it, really just covering up. Can only take so many. 
big right hand right on the right on that jawline and then hits the second one and then just goes after him does not let him breathe does not let him have a chance of composing himself to get himself back takes big shots great job by Nick Brown it proves to be a good night for NyQuil Nick Brown improving to 13 and 1 2 and 0 here in Bellator MMA and he has well run the full gamut now in terms of finishes has one knockout and one submission as Brown beats Mandel Nalo and let's go to Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end, two minutes, 20 seconds. Into round number two, the winner by TKO, Nick Nyquil Brown. Let's go to Big John McCarthy. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm with Nick Brown. Nick, that first round was a tough round. You took some big shots. You ended up going down a couple of times. You survived a beautiful anaconda choke. You got yourself out. What were you thinking of going into that second round? I felt the second, uh, first round, I didn't put apply the pressure like I wanted to. You know, that uh, that's going to change next fight. First, I want to give thanks to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, with all him. Uh, nothing is possible. Um, you know, I knew he was a wide striker, so I could take advantage of the kicks. You know, that pressure wasn't there, so I was a standing still target for him, so. We're gonna mix that up, come back, be even better. We talk about your pressure and that you're always coming forward, always being who you are, looking for the takedowns off of your strikes. When you landed that right hand, in fact, you landed two. When you landed that, did you know, oh, this is my chance to finish this? Um, I felt the one slip in. You know, as soon as you make contact, don't back up, don't circle, stay in. I uh, stayed in, sat on that second punch, dropped him. Uh, you know, jiu-jitsu took over after that. Ground and pound, got it. I want to dedicate this fight to my uh, friend, Joel Chisler. He passed away due to COVID about a year ago. I want to dedicate it to my sister, Paige Martin. She's, she's family. You know, what she's been going through is the same thing I do in this cage. She's a warrior, she's a battler, she's never going to give up. I want to thank everybody here in attendance. Bellator, it's here, guys. They put Bellator puts on a heck of a show. I want to thank my teammates, All-American, everybody in Pittsburgh MMA, putting it on the map. And we're going to carry them all the way to the top. 13 and 1, that was a big, big win. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the Nyquil, Nick Brown. Representing the Steel City with steely determination, Nick Brown is on a six fight win streak. He improves to 13 and 1 as a pro, 2 and 0 oh in the Bellator MMA cage. And to put a button on the preliminary proceedings, let's go back to the fight desk. Here's Amanda Guerra. Well, we appreciated Amanda Guerra, Josh Thompson up here. Talk about Nick Brown come from behind to get the victory tonight, Josh. Very impressive. Amanda Onalo is a stud at this weight class. And I got to tell you, honestly, Nick Brown just came out, did what he had to do. He got it done. Weather the storm in the first round. Great performance. Congratulations. Josh, instructions are hard for you. I know this. Okay, so we're going to show the main card we got coming up tonight here. Uh, the main event, Name and Gracie going up against Logan Storley. Here's your instructions, Joshua. One sentence, set up this fight for us. Can it be a paragraph? Can it be a paragraph? You can't, no Let's paragraph. Talk. One sentence. Brazilian Gracie Jiu Jitsu versus American Wrestling. That's what you got in store tonight. I cannot wait. All right, we'll give you a paragraph here in the main show coming up on Showtime starting at 9 Eastern. Bellator 274 rolls on. We'll see you there. Caught up a career highlight victory. Right uppercut, got back on the knee. Top contender Neiman Gracie. Gracie wins again. Puts his legendary name back on the line. In a showdown with Logan Storm Storley. Beautiful job by Logan Storley. The man who pushed welterweight champ Yaroslav Amazov to the brink. Could he finish it right here, right now? Who will submit? It is all over! Who will survive? And that's it! Bellator MMA, Gracie vs. Storley. Tonight, live on Showtime.
Big John alluded to this earlier. He basically said, but I agree with, which is very rare for me to agree with Big John, is that he is probably the best Gracie that has ever fought. In terms of he's the most well-rounded. He's got good wrestling. Okay, he's got good striking. That was good. That was good. Can I talk to you? Of course. I used to change his diapers. Let me see how funny he is. <laughs> You've known him this long. Okay, this I used to change his diapers. Look at him hungry all the time. <laughs> Why is he like that? <laughs> You've seen all of his fights. You've seen his progression as a mixed martial arts fighter. It really seems like Neiman striking, wrestling, bringing everything together. Are you seeing the same thing? Believe it, every every fight he gets better. He's been training hard, he's putting the game, like he's stand up, he's taking down. Yes. The future's amazing now, you know? And it's like I see him mature and became an unbelievable fighter. I can't wait to see his performance today. So the, the guys with Greco wrestling backgrounds are the toughest. Right hand, right uppercut! That's hurt of the knees hurt. of Levinger! And Neyman Gracie lighting up Levinger! Oh, right hand! It is the cage that keeps him up at that point. He's putting his hands up like he's in a schoolyard fight where he doesn't know where he's at, what he's doing. Then he gets it back, he fights back, and you see him start to go out on his feet. Gracie said as far as having the Gracie name, two ways to look at it. You can have all the pressure on your shoulders or you can enjoy and feel grateful to be able to carry the legacy. And that's how he feels. There's always pressure when you enter the cage. That pressure tonight for Gracie produced a diamond. Here is Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end. One minute, 27 seconds into round number one by TKO, Neymar Gracie. The evolution is complete. Neyman Gracie showing respect. And, well, I know Big John McCarthy's going to show him plenty of respect. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with your winner, Naaman Gracie. Naaman, your coach, Rafael Cadero, was bragging about you to me just the other day about, oh, you should see his striking. I said, hey, I said his striking was already good. He goes, it's even better. Talk to me about what you're feeling like on your feet in this cage. I don't need to take people down to win fights anymore. I can do it all. But if I take you down, oh, boy. Congratulations on a big win. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Naaman Gracie. I'm very happy with the fight. I'm very happy uh, winning the way that I did. I've uh, been working my striking for such a long time, and I always wanted to show this side of my game, you know? If we keep the fight standing, it's hospital. If we go to the floor, it's cemetery. So <laughs> they better be ready now. Round number one. Martin held in the white trunks, Michael Chandler in the blue trunks. Gary Copeland is the referee. Our Bellator clock is presented by PSP. Step your game up. PSP now just 129. Matt Chandler coming in very aggressively, not surprisingly, going for the takedown. This are Bell, opening, now rolling for a leg lock. This our opening lightweight tournament quarterfinal. Two young fighters held, as we mentioned, just 19 years old. Chandler, five years older at 24. Held, held's trying to straighten out that leg, going hard for the knee bar. He might have it. Going for the knee bar. Chandler said the only way he can conceivably lose is by a leg lock. Uh, that is a straight lock. He is putting everything behind it, but Chandler just is not tapping out. Huge crank on that straight. Now going for the toe hold, trying to transition. Knee bar to the toe hold. Huge crank there. 
Chandler trying to punch his way out. A, a hard to get the leg out once it's in that position. You have to put a lot of weight on it. And that's what he's trying to do. Put weight on that leg, trying to put that foot on the ground. Hell just going very hard for this knee bar. Hell still holding with the ankle. Man, furious start to this fight. Problem is that if Chandler gets out, he's on top. Chandler said, Jimmy, that's what he was working on specifically for this fight, leg lock defense. Well, he defended that leg lock. He did. Now looking to ground and pound. Dive in right hand, and Marcin Held closes guard. Now opens guard, trying to walk it up. Warning to Michael Chandler from referee Gary Copeland about elbows on the ground. Oh, good right hands by Chandler, though. Chandler with a big right hand. Chandler just popping up, throwing that right hand. I see a lot of blood on Marcin Held. Looks like Chandler might be bleeding somewhere, maybe out of the nose. Hell now holding half guard. Holding his arm. Look, he might be looking for an arm triangle, but needs to step out of that half guard position to get it. That's a great position for a wrestler, and he has it. Held grabbing his leg and straightening it to get space. But now he's done. There's the stoppage and the win for Michael Chandler. I didn't see a tap and maybe a technical submission, but Chandler is through to this semifinal. Held is still on the ground. I think he passed out. What I'm looking for in this first round is who's going to make the statement, I'm not locked up in here with you. You're locked up in here with me. Cage generalship is going to be huge in this fight. Who's the bully? Tonight's fight clock is brought to you by Miller Lite, the original Pilsner. Cheers, it's Miller time. Blue gloves for the Brazilian Galvão, red gloves for the world champion Joe Warren. Galvão talked about his ability to take Joe Warren down. That would be huge. One to the body. And hits the takedown. From the body lock. Demonstrating that top level Greco-Roman wrestling pedigree there. Galvão back to his feet, and he gets the reversal. Galvão showing that Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt pedigree there. World champion Michael Chandler using the hashtag Bellator 135, joining the global conversation. Very measured, very methodical thus far, Jimmy. Contrast to how the fight started between these two April 2011. All action in the early stages. More action there, Warren the right hand. The takedown, Galvo right back to his feet. Galvo so much more calm, so much more measured coming to this fight than either against Warren the first time or against Dantas two years ago. Warren for a leg lock, he's in knee bar position. He's to get Joe's weight off that leg. Trying to stack Galvo. Oh, he's got it. And that, that, is is deep. Deep. that is tight. Look at the torque. Look at the face of Joe Warren. The he's screen. Screen. That's it. That is it. That is a verbal submission on the screen. And we have a new champion. It is Marcos Galvo. Warren is protesting, but he screamed. You scream, that's it. That is a verbal submission. We have a new champion. All the guys teaching him. Oh, he's always got that wrestling that he can fall back on. Yeah, began wrestling as a freshman in high school, a six-time Greco-Roman All-American and a 2016 Greco-Roman World Team member, but putting his striking on display early as Yamauchi goes upstairs with a kick, and there's an outside leg kick by Gonzalez. With Chris, he says, look, I go to the ground with Chris Holsworth all the time. He's a great black belt in jiu-jitsu, and he's right, but everybody's style is different. When you start to get used to someone, you get to you kind of get that edge on how to stop what they do. Goichi is the guy that everyone thinks that they can handle on the ground. All of a sudden, they're down there, and they're tapping out, so he needs to be careful. Nice movement, nice head movement by Chris. That's a nice kick to the body. And for two guys that are noted for their ground game, the wrestling of Gonzalez as Yamauchi stopped that takedown attempt in the submission game of Yamauchi. We're seeing some high-level striking here in the first round. Oh, absolutely. Look, Yamauchi is Nice lead left uppercut by Yamauchi, lighting up Gonzalez, and Gonzalez returns fire. Time, what happens? You do not see Koichi Yamauchi going for takedowns. What normally happens is he 
starts to do well in the stand-up, and all of a sudden guys decide, I'm going to take him down. That leads them from. And then he takes their, their backs and gets 13 rear naked chokes on his resume. But boy, these two are going back and forth. Yamauchi with a three-punch combination, culminating with a left hook behind the guard. Oh, right uppercut by Yamauchi. Yamauchi's landing with the more power right now. Both guys are touching, but Yamauchi's the one that's actually getting off the better shots. And the uppercut has provided myriad highlight reel knockouts in boxing. Talk about John Fitch and grind is the word that you associate. Embrace you, the you grind. Take and you look up the word grind, you're going to see a picture of John Fitch next to it because that is his style of fighting. He grinds you to the point that he breaks you. The right one, now, Neiman Gracie he likes being in close. And that's a nice takedown. We'll see if he can keep it. Going for the leg. This is where he had some problems when he fought Paula Harris. He's only John Fitch has only been submitted twice in his career. One time to Josh Berkman, one time to Paula Harris. Well, we talked about this earlier. You and I, Josh, we talked about it. I said, that, you know, do you think his legs are susceptible since Neiman Gracie has been really working on a lot of leg lock techniques? I thought that Neiman would actually go after his leg in this. He's got a good attempt here. He has the ability at that inverted heel hook. And this is the position that he got stuck in with uh, Paula Harris. And he made the wrong rotation and turned it right into a knee bar. And that is the specialty of Husamar Paul Harris. Okay, learning how to be a, an, an MMA type fighter in Jiu Jitsu. And that makes a huge difference in his position as we're seeing here against John Fitch. Hicks and Katie said actually the pressure has helped him become successful. You see it here against John Fitch. These are not positions that John Fitch finds himself in. Normally he's the one on, in these type of positions. Nice job by Jumba. He's got it to protect his arm. Arm bar there, and then he was also going for the, the leg lock as well. This yeah, is when you, you got Gracie expect. tattooed on your back, they're probably pretty good with this. You would expect this from, from Neiman Gracie, though. I